evening, everybody. Uh, hopefully you can hear me. Is everyone, am I in earshot of everyone, generally? I was told specifically to talk right into the mic, so I'll do that. Um, welcome. Uh, this is the uh, June 12th meeting of the Board of Selectmen. I'll call the meeting to order. All members of the Board of Selectmen are present. Uh, I would invite everyone in the, uh, in the room to rise and join us for the Ple Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance. I'd like to recognize uh, that uh, our representative, Jim Maselli, has joined us this evening. Thank you, Mr. Maselli, for being here. We appreciate your, uh, your, your time this evening. Uh, we'll move right into uh, the transmitting of Treasury warrants, 48, 48A, 49, 49A, 50, and 50A. Do I have a motion? So moved. I do have a motion. Second. And a second. Any questions or discussion? I see none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We had one set of minutes from the meeting of March 13th, 2017, as presented in our packets. I would accept a motion to approve the minutes as written. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I do have a second. Uh, all, uh, is there discussion on the minutes? I'm going to abstain, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. I see no discussion. Uh, all in favor of accepting these minutes? It's four with one abstention. Thank you. Moving into our appointments, our 7 o'clock scheduled appointment is with Mr. Michael Woods, Department of Public Works Director, for a presentation and discussion relative to the Butters Row Bridge. Uh, suffice it to say, uh, the reason we're in this room tonight is we anticipated that this subject matter would uh, engender a fair amount of uh, uh, interest. Uh, and so thank you to everyone who took the time to come out tonight and just listen to the presentation and participate in this conversation. Uh, just a couple of housekeeping uh, uh, items with that regard. Um, I want to make it very clear, and I think uh, Mr. Woods and, and uh, Jeff Hall will make it clear. Currently, the town has no specific plan in place for the disposition of that bridge. That's really ultimately one of the, f the things we hope to come out of this discussion and meeting uh, is to get a sense of what's the general consensus of the members of the Board of Selectmen uh, as well as the population at large. I'm going to speak directly to it because I think he's got me cranked up too loud. Um, so that's that just with that as the backdrop and the context, I just really wanted to introduce this subject matter uh, to you in that, that regard. Um, additionally, I want to make it, um, I don't know, I want to encourage everyone who has an opinion on this to feel free to voice their opinions. The way this is going to work is we're going to have a presentation. Uh, at the end of the presentation, uh, I will open up conversation among the members of the Board of Selectmen first to ask questions, make comments. Uh, at the conclusion of that, when it, it seems clear that we've uh, had our opportunity to have our voices heard, I'm going to open it up to the audience. As you might see, there are microphones left and right. Um, and if you feel like you would wish to have your voice heard uh, or have a question or, or whatever, we're going to invite you to please step up to the microphone. And I just, I'm going to, as, as gently as I can, encourage everyone to be respectful of other folks' opinions on this matter. Um, I don't know yet, but I'm guessing that there might be some passionate opinions about uh, the disposition of the bridge today and in the, in the future. So I just ask everyone to be respectful uh, and professional uh, of each other. Uh, we're all neighbors. We all want the same positive things for the community, so we may have different uh, opinions as to how to get there. When we get to that part of the conversation, uh, I'll just ask that you direct your questions either directly to Mr. Woods, Mr. Hall, or myself, uh, we're going to try to run this like a town meeting would be run, uh, and I guess I'll sort of be functioning in the capacity of moderator. Um, and we'll just see how that goes. And, and everyone's going to have an opportunity to hear their, have their voice heard if they wish to do so. Um, if there's someone who wants to have their voice heard again or they have some additional comments, I'm really going to ask uh, that we make room for everyone to have their voice heard at least once before we go to uh, second opportunities for folks. So again, we'll just see how that goes. I'm not going to in institute limits or anything like that. Um, and so, again, thank you very much for all being here. Uh, we'll get through the material as quickly as we can. I want to be respectful of everyone's time, but we also want to be uh, very comprehensive and make sure we flush out any conversation that there is to have. Uh, so with that said, I'll turn it over to Jeff Hall if there's additional commentary, please. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so just uh, briefly, in terms of staff here this evening, uh, as the chair indicated, uh, Michael Woods, who is the Public Works Director, is here this evening. Uh, Paul Aluni, who is the Town Engineer, is here this evening and will be participating in the presentation. And Jamie McGaldy, who is the uh, Town's uh, Public Works Operations Manager, is also here. So they will be uh, conducting the presentation. Uh, just by way of uh, some brief background, uh, Mike Woods has had uh, several conversations with representatives from Mass DOT, the Massachusetts Department of Transportation, uh, about uh, this bridge uh, and the indication that he has received from those he has spoken with uh, is that, uh, first of all, there is a priority system in terms of how these various bridges are dealt with. Uh, as you can imagine, there are uh, many more bridges across the state in need of some measure of repair than there is funding available. Uh, as was noted at, the, I believe, the last meeting, uh, the uh, Butters Row Bridge uh, is, uh, uh, is safe, at least in terms of the uh, mass dots inspectional process. Uh, there are some deficiencies, if you will. A couple of those uh, issues will be uh, dealt with uh, this year, this construction season, and uh, Mike and his team will talk about that a little bit. Uh, but one of the salient points I want to make is that uh, Mass DOT uh, is looking for uh, some consensus from the town uh, as to what, if anything, uh, we are looking to do with this bridge. Uh, given the number of bridges that they have to deal with, uh, they are not looking to get into a situation where they come in and uh, dedicate resources to pursuit of some option uh, only to have that option unravel. So really the intent tonight uh, is to try to determine if there is consensus amongst the elected officials, uh, the admin, as well as uh, you, the public. So with that as an overview, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Mike, Paul, and Jamie. Hello, I'm Michael Woods, Public Works Director, and uh, just to expand on what uh, has already been said, uh, at the uh, request of the town manager and the Board of Selectmen, we're here to present you with the facts as we know them about the bridge, a little bit of history. We'll set up a brief PowerPoint presentation that uh, my staff is going to uh, present now, and um, then we'll go ahead uh, after that and proceed with questions and provide you with more facts and try to answer some of your questions. And if we could uh, move with that. Good evening, board members. For the record, Paul Looney, town engineer. I'm here on behalf of the Department of Public Works to present to you information that we have gathered um, over the course of the last couple months related to the Barters Row Bridge. Um, as town manager um, Hall mentioned, this is a Massachusetts Department of Transportation owned bridge. So tonight you'll hear me say um, things like MassDOT, MassDOT, or maybe even just state. Who I'm referring to is the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. The goal of the presentation tonight, as it's been said, but I want to reiterate, um, is to present the board um, with a framework to have a post-presentation discussion on if it makes sense to um, embark on a long-term action plan for the bridge or inquire with the state uh, regarding a long-term action plan for the state. You'll see from the presentation slides that um, some action in the form of re rehabilitation by the state is imminent. Um, the, <coughs> um, excuse me for a second, the, um, Long term, I'm sorry, the, yes, thank you, Mike. <laughs> the short term action by the state um, is, is imminent, but what we'd like to discuss here this evening is whether or not um, it's in the town's best interest to um, pursue or inquire with the state on whether um, reconstruction is, um, is in the best interest of the town. 
So I just ask that we um, save all questions to the end of the presentation. And um, Jamie, slide. So before we talk about the Butters Row Bridge, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about Butters Row. Um, I provided an aerial photograph of each end that has circled each end of Butters Row. Um, one end is, uh, occurs at Main Street, the other at Chestnut Street. Butters Row is on the south, south side of town. Um, actually, I have a map dating back to um, 1776 that shows Butters Row on it. So it's one of the oldest traveled ways in town. Um, it was actually one of the first publicly accepted ways in town. It was accepted in 1894. Butters Row is defined as a collector road. Um, what's that mean? Um, a collector road is a classification by Federal Highway. Um, it literally means it uh, collects traffic from side streets and distributes that traffic to our main arterial roads. Um, that being, in this case, Main Street, which is Route 38. There are approximately 500 homes that are served by Butters Row in the general vicinity. Um, 60 new homes are currently under construction. We're seeing an average daily traffic volume of 2,700 vehicles per day, um, with the majority of those vehicles traveling in the, after in the afternoon commute heading west from um, Main Street um, over the Butters Row Bridge um, towards Chestnut Street. And as um, you're all aware, Butters Row Bridge is located up by Main Street um, and it carries traffic over the railroad um, to and from Route 38. Slide. Butters Row Bridge background. Um, so these two pictures are uh, plans that I had in the office, or excerpts from plans that I had in the office. The top plan is a cross section of the bridge, as if you took a slice right down the middle of it and looked at the bridge as you're approaching it. The bottom picture is um, an elevation view. It's if you're standing on the um, railroad tracks and looking at the bridge in profile. Original construction dates back to 1834. It was built when the Boston Lowell Rail Railroad was built. It was built to avoid an accurate crossing. Um, as the automobile um, became more popular at the turn of the century, um, the bridge was reconstructed in the 1920s to accommodate that vehicular traffic. Uh, the bridge was reconstructed in, in the 1980s um, to include a third span and um, some replacement of the timber decking. Again, it's a MassDOT-owned bridge, um, and the bridge is currently posted for a five-ton load rating. And I'll get into what exactly that means in a few slides. Slide. But first, I want to talk a little bit about the MassDOT Bridge Inspection Program. Uh, MassDOT's responsible for the inventory and um, inspection of all bridges in the Commonwealth. Um, they follow the nation nationwide standards for inspections. Um, they follow the National Bridge Inspection Standards. They follow these standards to become eligible for federal funding for replacement or repair of the bridge, of, of their bridges. Um, Bridge components are inspected, they're given a condition rating, and it's all done on a standard form. Having a standardized form and inspection report allows MassDOT to prioritize their, um, their, prioritize their um, asset management program and start scheduling some um, repairs and um, replacement. The frequency, the, the frequency of the bridge inspections are dependent upon the condition rating. Um, Routine inspections, they don't exceed two years, but if ratings fall below a certain threshold, they are, um, their frequency is increased and they go to um, a one-year cycle. Currently, the Butters Row Bridge is on a one-year um, special member inspection cycle. Slide. What components are inspected? These are some basic bridge components. You have your bridge decking, your superstructure, and your substructure. Bridge decking is everything from the surface up. It, um, your, your deck, your asphalt surface, curbing, if there were sidewalks, railing. Um, that carries the traffic load to this bridge's superstructure, which are the bridge stringers or the beams that support the bridge deck. 
that the stringers span and they connect to the substructure, which is the bridge abutments and the bridge piers, which then translate that load from the stringers to the earth below. Slide. This is an excerpt from a Butters Row bridge inspection report. Um, you'll see here I have highlighted um, or a red arrow indicating the date of the report, which was in June 2016, and this was a routine bridge inspection. So where this is on a yearly inspection, we're doing a new inspection, um, I would say, any day now. Uh, right below, there was a damage report inspection done, and that was done in December of, 2000, oh, December of 2016. Um, a freight train with some high cargo, I'm told, um, struck the stringers of the bridge. But the inspection came back, um, had some damage, but the ratings didn't change from the June 2016 routine inspection. Slide. This is another excerpt from the bridge inspection report. Um, these are the condition rate, this is a condition rating guide. So you'll see they go from nine uh, being excellent down to zero, which is field. I have two red arrows here at um, condition rating number five for fear and condition rating number uh, four for poor. I um, highlighted these two condition ratings, as you'll see from the um, next three slides. This is about where um, most of the members were rated at for the Butters Row Bridge. Now, it, as uh, the town manager stated, that doesn't mean it's unsafe for vehicular traffic, but a poor rating does indicate that there's advanced deterioration in a member. Slide. So let's get into the actual bridge inspection report for each member. Um, we'll start with the bridge decking. This is, again, the timber planks, the asphalt wearing surface, the curbing, the chain link fence. You'll see the condition rating was actually given an overall rating of five, which is fair. But there are subsections here that came in at a rating of four. Um, that was the wearing surface. And you can see that deterioration here in the photo. And also the timber curbing that runs along. And um, if wouldn't suggest walking over the bridge, but if you ever do get a close-up look, you can see some advanced deterioration to get an idea of what a poor rating um, constitutes. Next slide. Now on to the superstructure. The superstructure are the timber stringers that span uh, the bridge abutment and the bridge piers. This came at an overall condition rating of four, um, poor. This is concerning for a couple of different reasons. One, it supports the deck. Um, but two, if you just think about a program for rehabilitation um, where some members of the, sub members of the bridge decking came in as poor, you would think that any rehab would also involve the stringers, which is a, I would say, a significant undertaking. Um, slide. I guess the silver lining here is the bridge substructure. That came in um, at an overall condition rating of fear, but the sub-members came in as rated um, as fives and a couple sixes, actually, too, which is um, classified as satisfactory. That's the bridge abutments and the timber piers. Slide. Let's talk a little bit about the, br the bridge load rating. Um, MassDOT is not only responsible for inventory and inspection of the bridges, but they're also responsible for uh, doing what's called a load rating report, and that's to determine uh, what a safe load is for a vehicle to pass the bridge. This bridge was posted or rated for a five-ton rating. That's 10,000 pounds. Um, to give you some perspective there, that's most passenger vehicles, vans, um, certain types of ambulances, uh, pickup truck, light to medium sized pickup trucks, um, but that's it, it does not include a, any of the other safety uh, fire trucks or um, box trucks or anything like that. Slide. This has al already been said, but um, what's next? What are we hearing from the state? Um, wh what I've heard is the, there is a short term maintenance plan um, 
on deck for the summer to replace some of the um, deteriorated timber planks. And there's also, uh, they have filed a permit with the MBTA's operator, Keolis, to replace um, the uh, larger uh, portion of the timber planks and resurface the, um, the asphalt wearing surface. They're hopeful that that would be performed before Labor Day weekend, but it's really all dependent on how fast that permit is um, processed through Keolis. Slide. So looking ahead, um, what we're also hearing is that this isn't, does not seem to be a relatively high priority for uh, bridge reconstruction, for any type of reconstruction. And by reconstruction, what I'm referring to is um, a major overhaul and um, expansion to a, um, perhaps to a two-lane bridge. MassDOT has no current plan for it. Um, it is a, a MassDOT-owned bridge. They're responsible for all their inspections, maintenance, and any subsequent replacement. Um, so any design funding um, or construction funding all comes through the state. But we're hoping to um, find it important to seek input from the community to uh, regarding any long-term action plan where there's certain members of the bridge that are advanced, um, have advanced deterioration. Um, it'd be nice to come to a consensus and perhaps approach the state with a plan a longer term plan. Slide. So that's the topic of discussion. Um, is there a community consensus on a long term action plan? And if there is, um, do we approach, is it the right time to approach the state um, with that plan to convey and the town's best wishes, whether that's um, more rehabil rehabilitation or um, a full reconstruction of the bridge. I want to thank the selectmen for the time this evening. Um, and certainly if you have any questions, I'm here. Um, Director of Public Works, Michael Woods is here. And our operations manager, Jamie Magaldi is here. And we have um, police chief, Michael Bagonis here as well. Thank you. Uh, thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it very much. Um, the images, I think, in my opinion, speak a thousand words, um, and maybe even a million. Uh, the, uh, the, the context uh, and the content uh, that you offer uh, is useful uh, based on your professional uh, position uh, in, in reviewing this, and I appreciate also that you, know, you just really just gave us the facts, and it wasn't really an opinionated uh, kind of uh, presentation. So thank you very much. Uh, so as I mentioned, uh, at this point, I want to uh, open up to the my fellow members of the Board of Selectmen. It's hard for me to kind of see you, given the, the curvature of our table here. So um, yeah, please, Mr. McCoy, just jump right in. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Can you hear me, everybody? Because I know the microphone you got to bring. I got a loud mouth anyway, but just regard that. But anyway, folks. I appreciate the chairman uh, calling this meeting to talk to all you residents. I want to shed a little light, a little history on this bridge. Back in 1987, I did serve on the Wilmington Board of Selectmen. Back then, there was talk about a two-lane bridge. Overwhelmingly, the residents in that area off Butters Row were all in favor of a single-lane bridge. And we had a meeting in Room 9 back at the town hall. They were in favor of the single-lane bridge back in 1987. Right now, I know 30 years have passed, and I know there's a little bit of a difference out there. And a few months ago, I remember Mrs. Earl and some residents off Butters Row were concerned about the safety. And we did have the chief of police uh, do some radar to try to keep the traffic from speeding. And I know a few months ago, working through the town manager, I was able to work with him and have a meeting at the town hall in room nine about three or four months ago. And we only had about maybe 10 residents at that time. And it was uh, at that time, most of everybody was talking about a single lane bridge. I mean, I'm all ears, and the bottom line, doesn't matter if it's a single lane bridge or a double lane bridge, we need to take a look at the safety of the residents. Now let's take a look at the history. You look around our town, Butters Row, Chestnut Street, Wildwood Street, Federal Street, Wooven Street, Eames Street, these are all scenic roads. These are scenic roads that were laid out many years ago, so we're not widening the roads. Obviously, when you get more traffic, you're gonna have more uh, of an issue. And I've always said, I don't know, having four entrance and exits off I-93 is a blessing or a curse, 
that's still, uh, the jury's out still on that. But the bottom line is we really need to take a look at it, and I understand the folks out there, and that's why I'm here to, uh, to, to listen to this. Uh, you know, we're the last ones to hear this. You know, I know initially at the planning stages when there's a development comes in, we should really be notified of what's going on because it seems like we're the last ones to find out certain things. And obviously, you know, what are we going to do? Put another set of lights? All you're going to do is put a set of lights here, a set of lights there. You're going to move the traffic quickly from spot A to spot B, then it stops. And it's going to be a bottleneck. The bottom line is we do have an increase in residential development with more potential. We do have, uh, you know, the businesses in the community. And I'm guilty as charged. If I'm running late and I live off of Andover Street, Treasure Hill Road, and I have a selectman's meeting, I'll be honest, when the traffic's bad, I'll go down Lawrence Street, cut through Glen Road, you know, guilty as charged to go to the town hall. Everybody in this room has probably utilized a shortcut. Not only that, what do you think the folks, I, amazed, 2,700 cars go over that bridge. So there's a lot of traffic out there. You know, I just want to let the uh, folks, uh, you know, realize that. So. I appreciate the time, Mr. Chairman. I'm all ears, and once again, whether it's a single lane or a double lane, and I'll admit, at the last meeting, there was only about eight residents, they're all in favor of a single lane, but I am understanding of a two-lane bridge. I, can, I get it, I understand that. I'd love to hear from everybody here before I make an opinion on that, but we need to make the, uh, the roads a lot safer. And I appreciate it, Mr. Chairman, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Carrick, please. Um, first, I wanna thank all the residents for attending tonight. Uh, I brought this forward at the last couple of meetings and um, it's great to see so many people here uh, to talk about the bridge and to give their opinion. Uh, I received a, a few phone calls and that's why I brought it forward at a few selectmen uh, meetings ago uh, about the safety and the issue that uh, that, that bridge is, is looking like. Uh, and now that we see the report that it's in fair to poor condition, it sort of puts everything uh, in a different light. Uh, safety is the main concern as far as I'm concerned. Um, you, you can't get a fire apparatus over that bridge. It has to go down uh, 62, down Burlington Ave, up Chestnut Street. You know, God forbid if there's ever a, an emergency in, in the f back end of Butters Row, uh, it would take that much longer for um, vehicles to get there. Uh, and that's really my main concern. I would be in favor of a two-lane bridge uh, with sidewalks. I think if it needs to be done, it needs to be done right. Uh, I understand that there's traffic, uh, but there's traffic everywhere. I live on Woburn Street, and that's a cut through just like some other residents who live in different areas of town. Uh, traffic is, a, is uh, going to always be there, unfortunately. And people are going to look for different ways to maneuver around town. Uh, that's just human nature. But I really believe that that bridge is in such disrepair uh, and it needs to be looked at now. Not for us to come back five years from now or 10 years from now and say, ah, we should have done it back, you know, in, in uh, 2017 when we had the opportunity. Um, it's, it's now that it needs to be done. And, and I'm interested in, in listening to your, your viewpoints on this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Carr. Mr. Bendel, did you have something? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, everybody. Gentlemen, thank you for the nice presentation. And I'm uh, very appreciative that everybody came out. I know it's not the air conditioning that brought everybody out here tonight, so uh, thank you for being here. I look forward to your input. Uh, I do uh, look forward to hearing your uh, opinion because I believe this should be a community decision, uh, not just a board decision. So I look forward to your input. Um, I do think the timing of this conversation is appropriate given that we just opened a beautiful new park across the street, that the town uh, just approved 48 units on Main Street at the past town meeting, and that there's development going on on Chestnut Street. So I do believe the timing for this conversation is right either way it turns out. Uh, so I look forward to hearing uh, your input. I know that uh, traffic is certainly a concern. I live on Burlington Avenue. I'm familiar with traffic myself. And, uh, but number one priority for me is safety as well. And I know it's, uh, that concern is shared with probably everybody here. So I look forward to hearing your input, and I appreciate everybody being here. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. Mr. Loud. Yes, I um, agree with my three fellow selectmen so far that um, I'm very happy that we're all, you are all here. I, I am the new guy on the block. I don't live on that side of town. I do go over the bridge from time to time, and I am here to listen to what you all have to say. I am not going to make an opinion if it's a one or two lane or a ten lane bridge, but certainly the safety is our biggest concern. I do have a couple questions to, um, on the presentation, if you don't mind, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
Paul or Mike or Jamie, why isn't there any work being done on the stringers if that, if that was a poor condition? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. I, um, what we're hearing from the state is, is their short-term goal for the summer is, is to replace the decking. But as I mentioned, the, it would only make sense that once the decking is pulled up that the, the stringers would be, um, they wouldn't attach new decking to a poorly rated stringer. That, that's the reason why I asked that question. And, and whether this bridge is replaced or repaired or refurbished, it's, it's not going to be done this year, next year, or the year after. So the stringers are just going to get more deteriorated. So is that something that the town, you or Mike or Jamie or town manager or somebody can push the state to get a better answer than it's on, it's on, on their list? Uh, right now, we're, we're told it's not. Uh, we can certainly inquire about it. Um, the other question I had in my packet, I, and Mr. Chairman, maybe Jeff might be to answer this because it was his email that said that the town about 15 years ago paid for a town engineering design for a two-lane bridge. Is that something that we still have on file that we could possibly look at and maybe save money in the long term? Uh, I would not expect we would uh, be able to use that, uh, that same uh, engineering uh, design uh, but we, we could certainly look at it, but uh, I, I think the, uh, sh the direct answer is, is no. Thank you. Again, thank you for everyone for coming out tonight. I'm all set, Mr. Chairman, for now. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my only comments uh, before we turn it over uh, to the residents here are our safety. Um, you know, we heard uh, presented to us a few moments ago that this bridge was originally built in the 1920s uh, based on the anticipated usage at that time and the based on the type of vehicles that existed at that time. Uh, you know, imagine, um, you know, people didn't have telephones in their house in 1920s and I'm carrying this around with me now. So a lot has changed over the course of those years. Uh, I acknowledge that there was some reconstruction done in the 80s, but it effectively it's the same bridge that was built in the 20s. Uh, and up uh, on screen here is, is what it looks like. And any of you, I think most of you probably know this bridge pretty well. That's what it is, and so my primary concern, not to say that I, I eliminate any concern about traffic, uh, but my primary concern is safety in all of its manners. Safety with regards to uh, getting from one point to the other, just traveling over it without someone at the other side not knowing how to use the mirrors or saying, to heck with the mirrors, I'm just gonna go anyway, uh, and, and you know, finding impact in the middle. Um, safety in terms of the condition of the structure itself. Uh, we have poor to fair in terms of the structure with no anticipated, no expected, no planned major reconstruction on the radar screen. And I, I don't know about you, DOT sometimes has a tendency, I'm guessing that DOT has a tendency to move kind of slowly. So even if they got this into their queue today, I'm afraid that we still wouldn't see them taking action for some period of time, maybe even years. So waiting uh, to get something in queue uh, doesn't seem like a sensible idea. Uh, and just, you know, we talked about a train impact. I think, uh, Paul, you, were, you referred to a freight train that impacted the, the uh, underneath of, of this bridge. Fortunately, no major construction, uh, no, no major damage to the, to the structure. Uh, I think we got lucky, uh, personally, and I think uh, the next impact, we not, may not be nearly as lucky, and God forbid there's a vehicle on or about to be uh, coming over that bridge. So those are the things that keep me up at night, uh, that we have to have this conversation, and I'm awfully glad that we are. We're gonna go out to the audience here. Um, I wanna stress that if, there is, if there's anyone that cannot get to a microphone, uh, one of our staff folks will be glad to bring you the microphone. Um, I do see Representative Maselli, I think you wanna uh, have your voice heard first, so I'd certainly recognize you. Um, I would also say as, as Representative Maselli prepares to speak, the rest of everyone else, when you uh, go to the microphone, I would ask that you identify yourself by name and your address for the record. We're, we'll have uh, the minutes uh, of, of this meeting and that's a, a necessary component of uh, preparing those minutes. So, uh, Mr. Maselli, please. Thank you for being here. Uh, to identify myself, if I have to, but I will. Representative Jim Maselli, I represent Tewksbury and Wilmington. And it bothers me immensely, and I wasn't gonna say this, when someone says, gee, is there anybody we can get in touch with to expedite this problem? It's me, you can call me for crying out, for crying out loud. You talk about it's uh, a 
putting a note in a bottle and throwing it out in the lake hoping for an answer. I'm there. You can call me any time. And the best part about that is I'm on the Ways and Means Committee. We oversee all of the expenditures of the Commonwealth. And I've been known to take something that was on the back burner uh, in Tewksbury and move it to the front burner. So I'm there to help you. You, you want to call me? I insist you call me because I'll get involved in this one way or the other. I hate politicians who go down memory lane, but I'm going to do that tonight. I was at the last meeting relative to this. And let me lay out the scenario for you at that time. The selectmen, in their infinite wisdom and their integrity, uh, called me at that time and said, you know, we want to change that bridge. We want to get rid of that bridge. I got uh, the uh, commissioner to put it on a fast track. We got plans put together. Uh, and I've got those plans, I think, in my garage. We've got plans put together. And at that time, Selectman called for a meeting. And there wasn't any one of us, and I'm not saying how I feel tonight, who believed what the outcome would be. They called a meeting such as this at the town hall, and they got a pretty good turnout. In fact, a substantial turnout, relatively speaking. And I had the plans. I had people from the, uh, uh, that time it was Mass Highway, at Mass Highway out there talking about what we would do. The hue and cry in opposition was so overwhelming I don't mean people were whispering, and this as, is as their right. They were yelling. They didn't want it, and it was almost unanimous. And in fact, if I were a gambling man, I'd say it was unanimous. At that moment, the selectman turned to me, the chairman, and said, we're not interested. He said, you know, you brought the folks out. We appreciate that but we're not interested in doing anything. So the point of the matter is, and by the way, that was a great presentation. You didn't leave anything out. Point of the matter is, if you continue to do that, there's gonna be no one out there on a state level who's gonna to try to expedite anything for you. The fact that they're not here tonight is telling. I didn't ask them to come, but I assume Somebody made a request that they show up. From, they didn't, from Mass Highway. Jeez. Anyway, uh, bottom line is, Selectman at that time turned it down. So is it a dangerous bridge? You bet your boots it is. But I'm with you. Rather than go through an effort in futility, and I agree with you, I agree with you, the way you're running this meeting. Let's hear from the public tonight. Let's hear what they've got to say. But I'll say it again. I have the Secretary of Transportation who comes before us. I'm on the Ways and Means Committee to talk about her budget. And let me tell you, you know that old saying about he who controls the purse strings? I know I can get any project, and that's a big boast, moved up in the queue substantially. But I'm with you. I like the way you did this tonight. I'm anxious to hear what everyone has to say. I thank you for your time. Thank you for sending me an invitation. And uh, I want to hear it too. Mr. Maselli, thank you very much, uh, not only for the historical perspective, uh, but also for your uh, invitation and willingness to, uh, to go to bat for us. We appreciate that very much. And it's my hope, my sincere hope that we can uh, leverage that offer, uh, hope, hopefully soon. Um, so I do see uh, a, a young lady at the uh, microphone to my left, so if you would identify yourself. My name is Sharon Kelly Perella. I live at 145 Chestnut Street, so for any of you who don't know where that is, when you come out of Butters Row, come on to Chestnut Street, you can see me sitting there having my dinner, and you probably know what I'm having. My, my issue is we have a dangerous bridge. I get that, whether it's a single lane or a double lane. What I need to hear, and I haven't yet, and maybe if we continue to have meetings, I'm gonna hear how are you going to handle a double lane bridge that comes out to Route 38 
that right now you can fit four cars to that Route 30A. This is not like Aldridge Street or any of the other side roads because there is no bridge like this in the town of Wilmington. So it is dangerous. I'm a crazy fool. I walk Chestnut Street. I walk Butters Row. I walk it in the morning. I wouldn't even think of going down these streets at night. So if you're going to move forward on this, I need to hear more of how you're going to handle this traffic, if and when the, the neighbors agree to a two-lane bridge, how you're going to handle it when it comes out to 38. So that's important to me. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brill. Yes, sir. Kevin Conley for Elizabeth Drive. And I've been one of the cars going over that bridge for the last 20 years. And I appreciate the presentation. But it doesn't give you the true perspective of what it's like to go over that bridge. If that bridge today was in perfect condition, it is totally unsafe today. The people driving that do not understand how to go over a single lane bridge. It is extremely dangerous. Like Kelly says, it's impossible to walk across that. and take a, You'll be taking your life in your hands. We have the beautiful new park. You can't send kids to that park. That is just unbelievably dangerous. I mean, what I say is we should be looking at safety first. It's a two-lane road. We should have a two-lane bridge, overwhelmingly. I've been here for 20 years. I haven't heard any discussion of a bridge. Okay? I've been saying it to, you know, to Mr. Maselli for several years, and he's been telling me that people didn't want it. Well, I've been here 20 years, and this is the first opportunity that we've had a chance to say, if this bridge was perfect today, it is totally unsafe. I mean, we shouldn't be allowing any more construction until this is solved. And I totally agree with Sharon that it's a multiple problem. And if, if you solve the bridge, you have to then solve the, the traffic going out. Going out off the, um, to 38 is so dangerous. You know how many car accidents there are? And you, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And coming out from the new park, right, going across cross street, you wait and see over the next year how many you know, accidents we're going to have. That has to be solved. So it's a multiple-pronged approach. I mean, the condition of the bridge from going over it for the last 20 years has deteriorated significantly. I dare you to sit on that bridge when a train goes by, right? <laughs> you will then know that that bridge is not safe, right? So even if we had a safe bridge, you still have a massive problem there. So it's a multiple problem. So the town needs to look at it, how are we going to handle traffic? We should also look at how we're going to handle pedestrians. There should be a sidewalk on Butters Row. It's completely unsafe. I mean, Sharon's crazy. I see her out there all the time. And, you know, I mean, I just, you know, it's like, Sharon, what are you doing? You know, um, it's just not a safe condition. So we're adding more homes. I've heard talk of an apartment area going through there. And I understand more construction is going to come in. You can't close the door behind you. But uh, we have a responsibility to make it safe. Today, it's not safe. Kids can't go over that bridge. People can't go over that bridge. I mean, it's just unbelievable. So, I mean, even if this bridge was perfect, right, and I appreciate the input of what you've done, you have a major issue within the town. It's not the DOT. It's how we as Wilmington need to handle traffic. And today, we're not doing a good job for the residents of that area. It's very unsafe. So I propose a two-lane bridge with, okay, a pedestrian walkway. And that has to be coupled with how do people walk down there right, with the sidewalk, and then how do you get out onto that street because it's really dangerous. I tell my kids not to go there. It's just something that we need to take care of. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connell. Please, yeah. Uh, Kevin, do you mind bringing the microphone to, uh, to Mr. Masson? No problem. He's right. He's asked me in the past, and that was Christmas past. It was turned down, and as far as I was concerned, that was the official viewpoint of the town. And uh, we're not trying to circumvent the town. But maybe from tonight here on, uh, we might talk about uh, this uh, situation in a positive manner. And once again, I'm with you. I want to see what everybody has to say. Thank you, sir. Can I just add something? Uh, and I think maybe Mr. Woods can can uh, talk to it. I think that there's a study going on now for that intersection of Cross Street, Main Street. Is there a, are they looking at that in regards to traffic? Yes, actually, well, we have two things going on in town that would uh, help with some of the things that have just been said. 
One, we're doing an intersection master plan study on 39 of the uh, major intersections in town. We have a consultant on board. We've already read the draft report, needed some tweaking and uh, some additional information that's being done as we speak. Uh, the second item is uh, at last year's town meeting, significant amount of money, somewhere around $385,000, if I remember correctly, was passed uh, to redo Route 38 from Route 62 all the way to the Wolven Town Line. Uh, we will be coming before the Board of Selectmen actually in July 17th, I remember correctly that date, uh, to discuss the 25% design that will be submitted to MassDOT. Uh, we hope at that time that it's, uh, everyone likes what they see, that will be sent to MassDOT and they will take it from there, finish the design. We hope to get on the transportation improvement plan with the state uh, next year with that plan and that would address a lot of uh, the problems, specifically Route 38, Cross Street, and Butters Row that uh, Selectman Kyra has just spoke of. In fact, um, our town engineer right now is looking for uh, a slide that we do have that has the 25% design of that intersection, so at least a plan view of what uh, we're proposing there, which would be a light, four crosswalks, sidewalks on both sides, um, uh, I believe bike lane and um, uh, safer, um, what am I trying to think about, traffic light. Sorry for that stuttering there, but uh, uh, traffic lights will be able to cross people safely, uh, both pedestrians and everything. There's a hard vertical curve there on the north side, so to put something in temporary would be nearly impossible without, you know, uh, basically digging up the street, flattening it out and bringing it down so people would have a far enough view to have pedestrians cross safely. That's the issue today, but it is something we're looking to address and uh, we are on the right path. Accident rating for that intersection of uh, Butters Road, Main Street, and Cross Street. Do we know the answer to that? Is it an A, B, C, D, E, F? Do we know that? Uh, I Paul? do not know that. Um, Paul, I would. Well, the Main Street, Cross Street, Butters Road. Uh, if if we can get that, we we could we could know that, and then any improvements that Mr. Woods just mentioned might increase. Well make it a better I would, rating. I think we, I could say without much hesitation is that during the traffic hours, it's an F. Okay. Most of the intersections aren't rated unless they have signalization. Oh, okay. So where that doesn't currently, um, it may not have a, an official um, designation, but we'll check into it and get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. If I may interject at this point, and I'm sorry, I'm going to come over to my left here in a moment. Um, at this point, I, and I had thought of it a few moments ago, but it slipped my mind. Uh, I would like to, uh, I think I, I saw uh, Chief Bagonis, the, the police chief, uh, it was, uh, is in the room, and I think it might be now and maybe at other times during this conversation, uh, we would welcome your input and feedback as it relates to what you witness from a safety perspective. What's the frequency of your, uh, your department going out to that site uh, for calls, for accidents, whatever the case may be? And, Frankly, I, I welcome your, your thoughts on it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So in the last three years, there have been 28 accidents, and that is from Chestnut Street out to Main Street, where Butters Row is. So we, our quick study where there were out of that uh, count, there were six actual accidents on the bridge, and they had to do with people coming up, either hitting mirrors as they tried to cross at the same time, or when people backed down, giving, giving way to another individual backing into another car. Um, surprisingly, there are less accidents exiting Butters Row onto Main Street than there are exiting Cross Street onto Main Street. That seems to be um, um, a, little, a little more difficult, but you can see the sight distances if you look up south on 38 towards Woburn. It's a little bit more difficult to come out of that intersection there um, from Cross Street. So when we look at it, you know, I would suggest that in, in a three-year look of 28 accidents in that rough area, that, that certainly is a concern. Um, some of those accidents, um, they're listed as butters in Maine, but there were actually some, four or five of them were um, just people on Main Street having difficulty in that area, and the accident reports don't show other traffic entering into that. It's a sight distance issue right at that spot at Main Street. Um, there was one accident where two cars uh, um, hit each other on Chestnut Street unrelated to butters. 
So I would say that there is an increase in traffic accidents in that condensed area. Um, some was a, uh, one was an OUI, another was a medical issue. So when you think about that going in and out of there, it is a tough road to, to navigate, but I would suggest that it, it picks up those numbers because of the concerns right on the bridge uh, itself with people trying to cross that. Um, we've done multiple speed studies in the area. So for Butters Row specifically, um, the average speed is about 27 miles an hour. Um, there are anomalies, there are people that go faster, there are people that go slower. As, as that's an average. Um, we've done some intense radar in that area as much as we can out of the 100 plus miles in Wilmington where everybody's have a concern with cut throughs. We're spending a lot of time out there, but uh, we do have a lot of data, um, three years of history on Butters Row, looking back at it, um, as well as we just recently did one on Chestnut Street. So anywhere, I mean, the data you saw earlier with the average daily travel on the road, um, you know, it, it doesn't seem to be over the top for what we see in traffic in general, especially for a road that feeds onto one of our major, major thoroughfares. Thank you, Chief. I, I want to also uh, mention, uh, Chief McClellan, you're also in the room. Uh, our fire chief is here with us this evening. And um, if there are subjects or questions that might relate to, uh, to fire safety or, or access uh, for safety vehicles from the fire department, um, Chief McClellan is certainly available. And Chief, I don't know if you, do you have commentary at this time, uh, given the nature of the conversation? Well, the only thing I'd like to add is obviously a two-lane bridge is a lot easier to go over for a fire truck than a one-lane. So you have to remember how is, you know, right now it's really a controlled crossing, meaning there's a pitch getting up to the bridge, it's flat, and then a pitch going down. If a new bridge were to go in, that pitch is gone because now there's elevations, and we would need to control, if it was a one-lane bridge, we would need to control how to get over that bridge. Uh, we have on the trucks now called Opticoms, that if you've ever been in the center or down at Lowell in Main Street, uh, with the emitter that we have on the trucks, we can turn the light green. We would need something similar to that if it was a one-lane bridge, because everyone that's gone over that bridge, whether you're coming from the Butters Road side or the Main Street side, people tend to not give up their spot, and they all go over, and then they sit there. So no one can get back over the other way. And it goes both ways. So it would be defeating the whole purpose of having a new bridge in our estimation, especially from a public safety end, is to have a one-lane bridge. You really need to be able to get safely over that bridge. And the question that came up earlier about time, I don't have a specific time, but I can tell you, going from the fire station now, uh, we only allow the ambulance and any pickup trucks to go over that bridge. And if you were on the low number end of Butters Row, which is towards the bridge, uh, the fire apparatus has to go up. And again, everyone knows it's usually at 5 o'clock back to Harris Street. Uh, we do not control that intersection at Chestnut Street, meaning we cannot turn that light green for us. So we're on the opposite side of the road trying to get up there. It's, it is going to add a minute to a minute and a half, two minutes to go down, I mean, you're talking, the tower is 80,000 pounds. A, the fire truck itself is 30,000 pounds. They, these are basically big dump trucks, and they can't maneuver at 30, 40 miles an hour, um, especially if Mrs. Kelly is walking. <laughs> you know, we have to make sure and stay out of the way, but it's, it's just a time uh, restraint to get around going the long way around. So uh, and from a public safety aspect, we are definitely in favor of double lane. Uh, a double uh, lane to get both ways over safely and being able to, to get over that, that side of the town. So. Thank you, Chief. Uh, uh, Mr. Woods uh, indicated that he wanted to address the, uh, the slide over my shoulder here, so uh, I'll let you have the phone again. Hi, just a quick, quick uh, comment. The slide here is uh, what we're proposing for Route 38, and you'll see this again at the Selectman's meeting uh, in July. Uh, you see realignments of Butters Row and Cross Street, so now they're perpendicular, to, or uh, directly across from each other. You have more perpendicular turns. Uh, you have four um, crosswalks, and then you see uh, heading north on 38, which would be to your left-hand side, the chevrons that uh, reduce that wide field that uh, Mrs. Kelly spoke about down into uh, more narrow and manageable paths so you can um, actually see both ways. So that's what we're looking to do 
with a project that is moving forward, uh, is currently on the books, and we'd certainly love to do something with this bridge at the same time. Thank you, sir. Um, Ma'am, please. Hi, my name is Eileen Calvo. I live at 23 Chestnut Street. I've been in my home for 17 years, and I have to say that in the last several years, we've noticed a huge increase in traffic. So I'm closer to the traffic lights at Route 62. Um, back when we built the Maselli Bridge, so what was that, around 1999, 2000? At that point, our town redirected and detoured people down Chestnut Street and over the Butters Row Bridge. That's when we noticed the huge increase of traffic. And as we've said, it's typically in the morning as people are going to work, but more so at night when people are leaving Coke and other factories here in town, they cut through the Butters Row Bridge onto Chestnut Street to Route 62 because Route 38 is too slow. So now they're making our home, our street, a major intersection. I am directly across from Patches Pond Lane. I'm the third house in from that light. I can't back out of my driveway. I have school-aged children. They go, to, they go to events. They go to sporting events. I can't get out of my driveway without having a major incident where either someone's yelling at me or I'm yelling at them so I can get out of my driveway. It is not safe on Chestnut Street. And now we're building 26 plus homes on the other side of Chestnut Street, having more people use the Butters Row Bridge, having more people who will need public service and safety to come down our street, and they can't get over the Butters Row Bridge. Why did we approve having 26 plus new homes being built on this street that we cannot service in an emergency? That's my big question. I am against having a two lane road. I've been against it because of the traffic. Nobody's taking that into consideration. Um, like I said, we've just got too many people coming down that road, it's not safe. About 15 years ago, a group of people on Chestnut Street petitioned the police department to stop people from turning right from Butters Row onto Chestnut Street between the hours of three and six so that mothers and, and fathers could walk their baby carriages, children can ride their bikes after school, and people can walk their dogs. We have no sidewalks. We barely have enough room where the, um, the curb line is in many places because that street is a beautiful, historic street, tree-lined. We have horses down our street. We have the most gorgeous, scenic street ever. And we're adding so many more homes and so much more traffic. I can't even tell you how many cigarette butts I find in my driveway and on my lawn from all those people stopped in front of my house waiting for the traffic light. It's disgusting. And this is what we've come to. We're building bigger, we're building up, and we don't have the infrastructure to support it. I'm afraid of a two-lane bridge to allow more commuters to come through our neighborhoods on my tiny little scenic road that can't support all those cars. That's my concern. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. If, if you will. Hi, my name is Dottie Pluff. I live at 3 Factory Road. Sorry. It's okay, thank you. I live at 3 Factory Road. Um, sorry. It's hard for me to speak publicly. Um, fine. I've lived there for 40 years. I'm right down at the end of, right down at the end of where the bridge is. And um, when I was a kid, we could ride our bikes, we could do everything. I understand 40 years later, I'm not gonna be able to do that. I am a runner and my daughter rides her bike. We do that all in Butters Row. It is scary, but if I don't teach her how to properly navigate this road, she's going to be stuck on one dead end street. Um, I think that we're all echoing the same thing tonight and that's safety. If you asked me 20 years ago if I wanted a two-lane bridge, the answer would be no. Tonight, I just want something that's safe, something that we can utilize to get over to Yentel Park. But I would also love the town to give consideration to the neighborhood that is in that area. I did speak to um, a police officer after I spoke to Mr. Hall. 
Not only do we have such an increase in traffic coming down our road, we also have tractor trailer trucks. If you can imagine how small this road is, they have to drive over my neighbor's lawn to be able to back down Factory Street to then turn back up Butters Row. Or sometimes they actually go up and over the bridge. That happens regularly. You can come down to Butters Row, you can take a look at 28 Butters Row. Her land is actually decompressed from the tra tractor trailer trucks turning around there. The other thing that I'd love to give consideration to is that, yes, everywhere you go there is traffic. I would say our road is probably smaller than average, has no sidewalks, and I do believe that our high school kids are dropped off at the top of Butters Row and have to walk down that street. So that's another consider. I could be wrong, but I do believe that the kids are dropped off at the top of Butters Row. I see them walking down. Um, there's no sidewalks for them to walk down on. So even during the winter, snow plowing, you know, our snow gets plowed from Factory Road up into Butters Row. During the winter, the DPW does a phenomenal job. But when you're trying to exit left out of, or just looking both ways out of Butters Row on 238, there's usually a big giant um, pile of snow there. You know, you have to call the DPW and they'll remove it. They're very responsive in that way, but there's just so much to consider other than just whether or not it needs to be a one lane or a two lane. Um, the Chestnut Street light, when I go to pick up my daughter, two cars get through that light at a time. Four cars go through, two cars get through legally. Um, and it's just a traffic flow problem that we have that I would love the town to give consideration to. We are not a typical road, and I just appreciate everyone's time here tonight and allowing us all to talk, so thank you. Thank you for speaking. I'll go to my left, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Susan Earls. My husband and I have lived on Butters Row for over 30 years. It used to be a rural road, but with the overdevelopment, and I say overdevelopment in Wilmington, and the surrounding communities, because it is not just people who live in the area that come down our road. Um, the traffic has increased over the last several years, getting progressively worse, and it has reached a point where it is unbearable. Not only is it unsafe, but with the increase in traffic have come, have come more speeding, and I, do, I apologize, Chief Bogonis, I do not believe that the, the average speed is 27 miles an hour. I'd like to see when you, had the, um, when you did the study, because um, we've seen the, the um, radar there. It's, first of all, it's usually facing the wrong way. It's there for a couple of days. It comes down. I think if you had that up for a year and you had it 24-7, you'd see a very different, and, and I think people slow down when they see it. Um, I think you'd see a very different story. We've lived there. I've, there have been a lot of close calls. Um, and the noise, the, the um, quality of life has deteriorated. It's gotten so bad that we're no longer able to block out the noise from the vehicles with straight pipes driving past our home by keeping our windows closed and having white noise going like our air conditioner or at night when we sleep we have white noise going. We've, we've gotten to that point where we have to do that. We cannot leave our windows open. It doesn't matter if we're sleeping. I've been woken up several times a night, not just once, several times a night with people speeding down our street with straight pipes, um, talking, watching TV, trying to sit in our backyard. Um, listening to music, we had guests over when we're having dinner. Um, it, we hear a constant hum because the vehicles, um, there are loud trucks that go by, but the motorcycles that rev up their motors, and I don't believe that most of them are from Wilmington. I think a lot of them are cutting through to go to Bill Ricca or um, some are probably from Wilmington, but it, if you're sick and you're trying to get some rest, it doesn't matter. You, you, you hear this, uh, and it's not just a, a low noise. It, it's loud. Um, we also find trash. We find um, alcohol bottles by the side of the road. We find um, cigarette butts. 
This is what it's come to. This is what our lives are like now. Um, I run. I keep saying to my husband, if I don't come back, look along the side of the road, I'm probably dead somewhere. Um, there have been numerous studies proving that living with this kind of noise, this constant noise, it's like living next to 93 where they put the noise barriers up, except we don't have the benefit of asking the state for noise barriers, um, that it affects people's health. The population in Wilmington has increased by 3,500 people in the last 10 years with no sign of slowing down, yet there have been no additional roads added. Um, you, there have been um, obstacles added like additional street lights on the major roads creating obstacles, forcing people down residential streets. And I've spoken with um, the ch police chief, um, with you, Mr. Hall, and you've said, well, you know, it's a problem all over town. However, most of the cut-through roads have sidewalks. Um, I've, I've actually taken the time to drive through them and observe. They have sidewalks. We do not have sidewalks. Um, and our, our street is very narrow. Um, we have to cross the street to get our mail. I've actually contacted the um, postmaster and they refused to do anything about it. I said, I, I'm worried for my safety. And they said, well, those routes have been in existence for a long time, we're not gonna change them. Um, in Wilmington's master plan, the goal was to increase the availability of pedestrian pathways and bicycles to cut down on the use of cars. We have that beautiful new park, and we cannot walk to get there. Um, so you're in, you've put a park there, and yet you've increased the traffic in order for people to utilize it. Um, and, and, and by the way, even the, the um, developments that have gone in, like Chestnut Estates and some of the other developments, they can't, they can't walk down Butters Road to use that park either. So they have to take their cars to get there. So that's added to the problem. In April of 2017, the Mass DOT released results of a road safety audit that they conducted in January of 2017. Um, and under safety enhan enhancements, making Butters Row a one-way road was listed as a possible solution to decrease the number of what they called conflict points. And if you read through that, it's 70 pages, but they did say that that area is very um, there were a lot of accidents. They, they consider it a very poor safety um, area. If the bridge is made into a two-lane bridge, there will be no deterrent to using Butters Row. I don't like using the bridge either, but I think that you've got to come up with some creative solutions. Um, if you're going to be putting in additional developments, high-density homes, um, apartment buildings on, on Main Street, has anybody looked at the possibility of using that railroad crossing um, from that Veritex building? Um, Chestnut Estates is not a cul-de-sac. And, and I could say that if the fire chief is concerned about going over the Butters Row Bridge, you could cut down Apple Tree Lane. There's no traffic going through that neighborhood. It's not, it's not a cul-de-sac, it's a through road, despite the fact that there's a sign there that says no through traffic. Um, I would propose that you keep it a one-lane bridge and make Butters Row one-way, put in sidewalks, put in bicycle lanes, um, so that people can actually utilize that street to get to the park, and um, have the developer of that project take a look at using that railroad crossing and having it, I don't know where it would go out, but I'm not an engineer, I can't figure that out, but there is a railroad crossing there, and it's not a bridge so it wouldn't need to be maintained. Um, 2,700 vehicles going down Butters Row, that narrow street with no sidewalks. I mean, <laughs> I, I think it's time for the town to address the traffic problem in Wilmington by looking at adding some existing infrastructure instead of dumping more and more and more traffic onto you know, these, these small streets. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. Hi, my name is Joseph Jackson. I live at 57 Chestnut Street, which is two houses this side of Apple Tree Lane. I have a statement from my wife, Jennifer Jackson, who's watching at home, and then I have some of my own comments. 
Um, so we're the th parents of three young children, ages four, seven, and 11. Before we moved to our current home, we lived near the water treatment facility down the other end of Chestnut Street in Woburn. Uh, we've navigated Chestnut Street and Butters Row for more than 10 years. Uh, when we purchased our home in 2013, we knew that Chestnut Street was frequently used as a cut through for commuters. We were aware that traffic would be an issue during commute hours. And we also knew there was likely to be uh, very little the town could do to alleviate congestion at 38 and 62. That said, we were not prepared for the reckless way that drivers navigate Chestnut Street and Bu Butters Row with marked speed limits of 20 and 25 miles per hour. Many, if not most, commuters exceed the speed limit without concern for road conditions, weather, and sharp curves in the street. Pedestrians, cyclists, children playing, or other traffic. When I drive these streets, I adhere to the speed limit. As I've done this, I've had cars behind me honk, use crude language and hand gestures, gun their engines, pass me on the left, and tailgate so closely that I could not see the headlights in my rearview mirror. These things occur multiple times weekly. When my three children are playing outside, they're not allowed to leave the backyard as I've watched traffic pass our house at 30 to 40 miles per hour, sometimes even faster. Distracted drivers on cell phones or otherwise have swerved into my yard at those speeds, and the street has been closed multiple times after vehicles have been involved in serious accidents. I appreciate and agree that a one-lane bridge is in desperate, uh, the one-lane bridge is in uh, need of replacement or repair. Additionally, the bridge would certainly benefit from a d different system for crossing as the mirrors do take some time and practice to get used to. I'm also certain that the bridge is a deterrent for some and probably dec decreases the amount of potential traffic that could be commuting via Butters Row and Chestnut Street. I do not oppose a new bridge in and of itself, but I do oppose an inevitable and unmitigated increase in traffic to the neighborhood. Our family will vigorously oppose a new bridge if plans are not put in place to ensure the safety of the neighborhood residents by enforce, enforcing posted speed limits, increasing the navigability of 38 and 62 intersection, and mitigating the hazards caused by new uh, commuters who were once deterred by the Butters Road Bridge. Removable speed bumps, increased patrice, uh, police patrols, and increased number of fixed speed radar signs are all worth exploring with the neighborhood's current traffic patterns, let alone uh, potential increased traffic a new bridge would bring, gratefully, Jennifer Jackson. For my own comments, um, so we lived on Bartlett Drive, which was a cul-de-sac, and it was wonderful, and our oldest kid learned how to ride his bike there. Right now, we don't walk or ride on the street. We'll go across to Apple Tree Lane or Towpath because that's a safe place. They have sidewalks and really wide streets. After we moved here, I did walk. I tried to walk to do what you did, but I, I, I went down and around Marion Street twice in the three years that we lived here, and I haven't since because I don't s feel safe, even with pushing a stroller in front of me as a protective signal that I've got children with me. Um, as far as the comment of, of being a beautiful drive, it is, and we can attest that we see the, the motorcycle clubs and classic car driving clubs, they come through because it's got nice curves and it's, it's fun to drive. Uh, we should take into consideration that we're not a Woburn Street, we're not Shawshine or Aldrich or Boutwell, that our average width is probably two-thirds of those. I haven't measured, but I'm a, uh, cognizant that you're holding your steering wheel very tightly as you make each of the S-curves in the road. Uh, we don't have sidewalks. I see cars with New Hampshire plates coming through, and I have friends that live in North Billerica that say, my fastest way to, to work without hitting traffic lights is down your street, which, I mean, I appreciate that it's a nice drive and that it's convenient. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're not residential and have no sidewalks. Um, these cars, by the way, that are going to work, they're used to driving on Shawshine where they're going 40 miles an hour. They're used to going on Boutwell and Cambridge Street where they're going quicker. So during the commuting hours, traffic is much more quickly. Incidentally, commuting hours are also bus hours. And when my kids get picked up to the bus, I'm with them every day because I don't trust the drivers on my neighborhood. I talked to bus driver Bill and bus number eight, and this morning he told me somebody passed his bus when the stop sign was out. My kids cross the street to get onto the bus uh, due to some special considerations um, for, for uh, driving times to, to school. Um, and he said increasingly with springtime that that's a real concern with inconsiderate uh, drivers during the morning commute. Um, 9 a.m., the road is dead quiet. That's normally when I go to 
go to work and I see the silence. This is what it would be like if we didn't have the commuters coming through. 7 p.m., it's quiet. Um, let's see, next column. So here's some ideas which are worthy of consideration. I don't mind the idea of a two-lane bridge, similar to my wife, but we have to be smart about it if we do. For example, and I mentioned this to, to Mr. Hull and Chief Bregonis at the, at the picnic when we opened the park. Um, with just a little bit of Google searching, I found that Amherst put in a single lane bridge by MassDOT, that they funded it. So it's not out of the question for MassDOT to put in a single lane bridge. Uh, the, um, it has a pedestrian lane at this one that they're putting in. We, we are not gonna drive, we're not gonna walk to the park, we're gonna drive to the park. My kids, even if they learn to ride their bikes, they won't be riding their bikes to the park as stands. It's just not uh, in our life expectancy plan. <laughs> we have speed bumps on Carter Lane. Chief Fregona said that speed bumps are really not considered approved, but we have them in town and we have them in places where there's a, a vulnerable population. Chestnut Street right now is a very vulnerable population due to the nature of the road and that we wish we could walk it, or run it, or ride our bikes, or, or do, do things on it. Um, it's also notable that Fox Hill and our next town over on Burlington, they have speed humps, raised humps. These things annoy drivers, and I don't mind that inconvenience because I live right in the thick of it, halfway between Butters Row and 62. And if we get some speed humps that will keep the hot rodders from getting up to speed and flaring their pipes, and uh, today on my way home from work, I saw that at the corner of Butters Row and Chestnut Street, we got nice new donuts from people showing off and, and spinning out. It's kind of disgusting the way it happens, but it's the nature of the beast. We do have to deal with it, and we have to know that there's ways to solve the problem without creating new problems. So with any plan we make, let's make sure that we don't create a new problem, secondly. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, thank you for waiting. Hi, my name is Susan McNeil Roy. I've lived on Butters Row for 47 years. And I can tell you that I'm afraid to get my mail. I have to go out at certain times during the day because the traffic is so bad. And I disagree with the police officer, I'm sorry. They fly up and down that road, it's insane. I can't let my kids out in the front yard because I'm afraid if a ball goes out, it's crazy. And like people have said, if we put in a two lane bridge, I disagree. We can't handle any more traffic on that road. I agree that safety is very, very important and I get that, but our road can't handle any more traffic. I mean, should I be afraid to get my mail? No, because I'm gonna get hit by a car if I go out the wrong time of the day. And cars fly up and down that street all day long and all night long, motorcycles, everything. So I do agree that safety comes first, but I also think there needs to be some consideration about the people that live on that street. I mean, I've lived there 47 years. It needs to be safe. I can't let my kids go out in the front yard. I can't let them go for a walk. I can't take them to the park. I can't do any of that. I can't even take my dog for a walk. So I think all of that needs to be taken into consideration. And through the years, they've made that bridge a one-way bridge. And I gotta tell you, traffic is amazing. There's no problems. There's no flying. There's no nothing. But just coming here tonight, just for the record, there was a dump truck coming over the bridge. And I know it wasn't legal. And that happens all day long. There's furniture trucks, I see Jordans, Expedix, everything coming over that bridge. And we wonder why it's in disrepair. I mean, I think those things need to be looked at as well. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for coming. Sir, please. Hi there, my name is Jeremy Holland. I live at 133 Marion. Um, and I work at Analog Devices on Woburn Street, so I go over that bridge twice a day, sometimes four times a day on weekends. Um, I don't want to belabor uh, too many of the points that have already been made about safety. It certainly isn't a safe bridge, and I don't think anyone here is going to argue that Chestnut safe Street is a safe street to, to walk on or, or to walk your dog on. Um, but Unfortunately, the fact of the matter is, is people do use that street as a cut through and that isn't gonna change, no matter what we do. Um, but we can make it safer to go over that bridge by widening it to a two lane bridge. Um, those mirrors, they're sort of effective at the best of times, but if there's weather or the weeds grow up or one of the drivers doesn't know they're there or just doesn't care, then 
it's a real problem. I've almost been hit by someone flying over that bridge as I'm halfway over it. And even if people just stop too far back, you can't see that they're there, and they don't know that you're there, and both people go at the same time. Um, the bridge isn't rated for heavy equipment like fire trucks that's been brought up, and that could make a big difference to a family in distress. And other heavy trucks, as a, the point was just made, still go over that bridge. I've seen delivery trucks, dump trucks, construction vehicles, all that construction going on up on um, Eleanor Drive and those other streets near me. Those trucks are going over that bridge at least some of the time. Um, to that point, um, like I said, it's, it's going to be used as a cut through no matter what we do. The solution to that is to fix the intersection at 62 and 38 and 129 up where the the bridge by the train station is. That intersection is a disaster, and that's the reason why people cut through. I have friends who work at Analog who live in Burlington and Bill Ricca, and they tell me that you know it cuts 20, 25 minutes, sometimes half an hour off their commute. Because going up 129 and slogging past Heavenly Donuts and up over that bridge to turn left on at 62 is, is just a nightmare some days. So, um, and of course, all these problems are only gonna get worse as the park becomes more popular. It's a great park. It's a beautiful park. We've been there a bunch of times. We drove. We burned gas and used up a parking space because we can't walk there as, as the point's been made. But as that park gets more popular, the, the problem's only going to get worse. And as they keep building houses up in that area, it's only going to get worse. And, and on that note, I think the town really needs to, to look into pumping the brakes on some of this new development until we have uh, some kind of a, uh, addressing of the infrastructure. 38, 62, 129, they all really need to be re-engineered one end to the other. They're, they're all major problems. It takes half an hour to get anywhere in this town from anywhere else, um, anytime between 4 and 6 p.m. So um, yeah, that's all. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Robert Spencer, 675 Main Street. Uh, I reside directly across from the New Yentile uh, Recreational Facility. And from my back deck, I have a front row bleacher seat to the Butters Row activities on a constant basis, whereby vehicles are contesting as to who's going over first. It's been that way for many, many, many years. My wife and I first observed it when trains were going by and they were burning coal. It's been a long time that this bridge has been this particular way. And I am in favor of this bridge being turned into a two-lane bridge with sidewalks. And one of the reasons I say that is the roadway, Route 38, that the superintendent had mentioned is under study at the current time. This is the ideal time with the state involvement on the bridge and the roadway to tie them together, to marry them, to resolve part of the problem. It isn't going to resolve the number of vehicles that are traveling on West Street, Lowell Street, Chestnut Street, Butters Row, but it is going to alleviate the intersection of Butters Row, Main Street, and Cross Street. There is a sight line issue there. Southbound traffic cannot see northbound traffic until they approach a certain point right in front of Weber Terrace. Many times that may be too late, and it could be uh, one of the causations of accidents in that particular location. The issues that I hear from the residents of the neighborhood, you know, I understand exactly what you're saying. I've seen it for many, many years, long before the area was built up. I hear it also from my own kids that reside on West Street. No sidewalks there either. They cut through there. It's all to circumvent the traffic that moves from east uh, west to east in the morning and back to the uh, west in the evening. It's just a simple fact of nature that people are going to, to work. They're looking for the highway to get there. Wilmington is a cut-through community for that purpose. It was proven many years ago when the National Democratic Committee held their function in Boston Garden. It's what came out of that that uh, many of us realized what was going on. So if you have this two-lane bridge and you have the support of the community and the selectmen and State Representative Maselli on the Ways and Means in your corner, 
then they can marry this intersection that's on this board behind you with a two-lane bridge. It's not going to cure the number of vehicles that are still going down Chestnut Street. So I would urge you, if you're going to take a vote, support the two-lane bridge, ask the selectmen, town manager, and the state rep to get going with it and see if they can have this tied in with the proposed intersection you see here. Because there's a sight line issue here. Just go there, sit there, and observe, and you'll notice it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Spencer. Yes, ma'am. Hi, my name is Christine Chen, and I live at 79 Chestnut Street. And I would just like to echo what a lot of people have said tonight, that living on Chestnut Street is very disconcerting from a traffic standpoint. I have small children. Uh, like everybody else, I don't let them play in the front yard. I've lived in my house for five years, and we've had three accidents literally in our front yard. And, uh, you know, I feel everyone's pain that traffic, the idea of it potentially getting worse is scary, but having a two-lane two -lane bridge, in my opinion, is the only solution. It, there's no way that uh, we're going to stop traffic on Chestnut Street. People are already using it and Butters Row as a, as a cross-through. That's not going to stop because it's a one-lane bridge. Um, the bridge is very dangerous. I've had many close calls. I've seen accidents there many times. The mirrors aren't really helpful at certain times of day. There's condensation, the light shines. Sometimes you can't tell if you're looking at somebody coming off of the bridge or going off, you know, uh, coming or going based on, you know, how dark it is out. Um, so I would just like to really petition that uh, you definitely consider a two lane bridge. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chen. Uh, Ms. O'Connell, so, so a great pleasure to see you here. Thanks for coming. You're up. I had only intended to talk on one item, but as I've been sitting here listening to the other speakers, I just wanted to make a couple of comments. First of all, I just wanted to say how pleased I am to hear uh, State Representative James Maselli offering to help in some regard. I think it's an important point to make um, in my prior tenure is that uh, we need to be uniform um, and unified on whatever we decide to do as a town or the state is not going to be on board with supporting anything if they sense that there is opposition within a community. They only want to fund projects that they have community support. So I think we all need to somehow get on the same page. I think there's been a lot of discussion as to what makes sense in terms of a single versus a, a double lane there. And I think people need to listen to uh, fire and police. I understand that people that live there um, their concerns. The one question, and this was the primary reason for me to stand up, is there's been so much talk about sidewalks, and I don't want anyone here in the audience that lives in that area to mistake my, my comments that I'm about to make that I think anyone should have the right to uh, take any part of your property, but I'd like to know from the town's perspective, if we talk about sidewalk initiatives, what does that entail? How does the town look at something like that? Are they successful? What would need to be done? and how does the homeowner uh, get impacted by that? And I'm assuming a lot of these don't get off the ground because you can't get unanimous support on any given street and that's where it dies. Um, but I'm hearing so much talk about that. Um, in addition, I just wanna let people know for the record with the Yentile project, the first few meetings five years ago, we had the state in and we specifically looked at an intersection so we've known that it's an issue. And then lastly, I've heard a ton of conversation about this big apartment complex in the Expedex site. In any of my research, I can't confirm that that is in fact true. So I'd like to ask somebody here from the town to confirm or deny this big project that has everybody all upset, which is just adding to the stress level, which could actually permeate into these discussions because people think there's this big apartment complex that I can't find to be true. So I just want to try and not have some false information impact these proceedings because people think this is going to be a gateway to a big apartment complex that so far I can't confirm is in fact even true. So if someone can help with that, I think that would be productive for people in this room to have the benefit of the truth of that project or not. Thank you, Ms. O'Connell. I appreciate uh, your comments and certainly I appreciate that last question. I think it's a, a grand opportunity to address it. I don't know. I, I, to, to that specific point, Jeff, could I defer to you? Uh. Uh, certainly, I can tell you that I have no first-hand knowledge of any plans to 
uh, construct a, an apartment building on the former Expedex property. I've had conversations with uh, Valerie Gingrich, who is the planning and conservation uh, director. Uh, she has not had any uh, conversations with anyone to that in that vein. Uh, the only conversation that was had, apparently someone from uh, the uh, Expedex uh, happened to be a representative from the union that uh, uh, worked there, had made an inquiry about the zoning for that particular property. But beyond that, uh, she has not uh, had any conversations with anybody. And I've also spoken with Al Spaulding, uh, the building inspector, and he has not uh, been apprised or had any conversations with anyone uh, interested in a uh, apartment building there. Quick comment, please. Oh, obvious, I wrote a letter to the other basically saying this, and I'll say two words, stay tuned, folks. There's a lot that's going on, you know, the bottom line is I don't see Valerie Ginrich here, and I would encourage everybody to come to a follow-up meeting, and I'm gonna ask the chairman, I said it before, it would be wonderful to have her in the room to discuss future development, and I had a good idea when I saw Ms. O'Connell in the audience that she was gonna say that. I'll just say stay tuned, folks. That's all I'm gonna tell you folks right now. A lot has happened, Mr. that's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. Uh, yes, thanks. Uh, I, I will say that um, it is anticipated to be on the agenda for June, is it 24th? 26th. June 26th, uh, discussion of, um, well, develop in, development in general and 40B uh, and our position, the town's position with regards to uh, low-income housing. Again, we, we opened up that, uh, that discussion a couple weeks ago and it is uh, slated to be on June 26th. So thank you, Mr. McCoy. We'll Mr. certainly uh, take that up. Yes, Mr. Bendel, please. If I may, thank you. Uh, I just want to take the opportunity to uh, go on the record as saying that no one has ever approached me about a uh, project at that property. Uh, the letter to the editor is the first time I've heard of it. And um, I also want to remind folks, I'm new, I'm new to the board, but I'm flattered at, at the thought that we may be able to approve a project like that. We don't have the authority to do that. It would go before town meeting a project of that size to be rezoned. So again, uh, I've received several calls and emails over the last couple of weeks about this. I just want to go on the record and publicly say that no one's ever approached me about a project on that site, nor have I ever voted for a project on that site. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. Uh, point, Mr. Yeah, please, go ahead. I'll just say it again, just stay tuned, folks. I mean, at the two meetings ago, we had Valerie Ginrich talking about an exclusionary zone. We're already allowing 10 units per acre to be developed in certain areas of Lowell Street, and you just voted for it, uh, Article 56, I believe, uh, on Main Street, Mr. Welch's uh, property. They're talking exclusionary zone, increasing it by 30%, putting 13 units to an acre. You know, you know, I, I've been in town a long time. I know a lot of folks as well, but I'm just saying stay tuned. That's all I'm gonna say, two words, stay tuned. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. I, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Woods, if you wouldn't mind, sir, uh, if you could address Ms. O'Connell's specific questions and concerns about the process uh, about uh, sidewalks in areas where there might be tight restrictions. Uh, building sidewalks on Butters Row would be a difficult task. Uh, it would also be very expensive. There would be a lot of land takings. Uh, the large trees on one side of the road, whatever side was decided to have the sidewalks, would all be taken down, which would drastically change the look and feel of Butters Row. Uh, I have had our town engineer, Paul Aluni, uh, take a look at this. He can give you exact numbers of trees and how many utility poles would need to move, the difficulties in getting drainage uh, put in that area because we need to make up for stormwater that uh, now isn't discharging to the ground that's now being sheet flowed off in these sidewalks. All needs to be put someplace and treated. Uh, we have the Middlesex can Canal to deal with at that location. Um, and there would be significant land takings. Uh, again, Paul could speak to exact numbers on that if uh, you so to care to hear about that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Woods. Ms. O'Connell, I, I wanna, you, you raised the question and I wanna feel comfortable. Yeah, that I mean, I don't wanna be mistaken that I'm advocating for that. I just thought if we're gonna have an open dialogue and a transparent conversation, people should know that you know, there's more to just putting sidewalks. I'm not saying that people in that area even want them, but while we're here, we might as well discuss it's been talked about Chestnut Street and Butters Row in terms of people's ability to walk on that street and the sidewalks have come up. That's probably one of the, the biggest buzzwords of tonight has been that. Yeah. So we, I just figured it made sense to have that conversation. 
And I agree, and I thank you for bringing it up. I think it's worthwhile to have that tonight as well as uh, going forward, irrespective of what happens with the bridge. I think this, the issue of sidewalks there and throughout town is one that's uh, it, it's a hot button for a lot of us. From a strictly transportation and engineering point of view, it does make sense to put sidewalks there, but it would drastically change the character of that area. A lot of land takings, very expensive. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Uh, I forget where I am. I think I'm over here, sir. Thank you. Uh, good evening. My name is Charles Prozemski. I've lived at 13 Hillside Way for just over 40 years, and my kids learned to drive on, on Hillside Way and Chestnut Street. And I have to tell you, from conversations with them, when youngsters get on that bridge, they talk about finding air uh, to go over that bridge pretty fast so they can catch a tiny bit of air. Now, and uh, what I'm thinking is if, if adults, older adults going over that bridge don't want to give anybody else a chance, and I see all these cars parked in the, in the high school parking lot. There are high school kids as well go over that bridge, and they don't spend a lot of time being careful to see who's coming over the other side of the bridge. Um, and, and I just think safety is just this main issue, but we're suggesting that um, what we want to do is to keep it a one-lane bridge to keep traffic off, and yet it creates sort of a, uh, a dangerous situation, and that's, I don't think, any way to control traffic. Um, among the things that I thought of, however, is when we said there were 2,700 cars a day no one told us how many pedestrians a day cross the bridge, probably because they don't have the electronic equipment to count them. But I have a feeling that lots of people don't cross that bridge, frankly, because there's no sidewalk and it's a very dangerous bridge. And it's unthinkable when you realize how far people would have to walk to get to the other side of that bridge that they cannot cross the bridge, whether it's youngsters or adults or kids with, with uh, or parents with a baby carrots. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, I don't want to be too critical. I think Wilmington is really the, the greatest town in the area. I grew up in, in Lexington, and, and I just think that Wilmington is terrific. And I think everything that Wilmington has done so far is wonderful. I think it's got a great tax base. And we, we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that whatever uh, the, the, the town fathers have done, it has really been in the best interest of the town, and I'm very much in support of it. Uh, but someone made a, another very interesting point today where possibly simply at certain times of the day, for, for example, prohibiting a right turn from Butters Row onto Chestnut is the kind of suggestion I think we need to pay attention to. And as I think about it, as I uh, drive, say, through Burlington and so forth, they often will have restricted uh, street access for certain times of the day for cut through streets. And I think that might be the single best solution to much of this. I still think it needs to be a two-lane bridge that's safe. And one way to restrict the cut through traffic is by some imaginative limitation of traffic uh, perhaps limited only to residents at certain times of the day or, or issues of that sort. And I think that can really speak to many of the issues that have been phrased today, and, and, I, and I think we need to pay attention to them. But in the meantime, it just doesn't make sense because people don't go up that bridge slowly. They realize that if they go up slowly, someone's going to come up the other side of the bridge faster and get to the top before them. And it just does not make sense to have that kind of a traffic pattern in, in a civilized uh, town that, that Wilmington really is. I wanted to think for two seconds to make sure I'm not leaving uh, anything else out. The other point I wanted to make is Hillside Way, uh, on which I live, uh, certain times of day I like to sit down and count the traffic, and it's usually an average of five cars a minute. And it reminds me that the reason that Chester perhaps is so busy, other people have pointed this out, is that it's really kind of a cut-through for Wuben and Burlington, because of the Burlington Res, there's not an awful lot of streets you can take to cut through the junction of those three towns, Wuben, uh, Burlington, and Wilmington. And it's probably going to get worse even without uh, uh, Butters Road Bridge being a two-lane bridge. The traffic is just going to pick up all the time. So it really cries for other solutions other than leaving it a one-lane a one, a one bridge, in all honesty. And I, I wanted to, and as I heard what was said today, I would suggest that nine people out of ten were very much in support of a two-lane bridge. Um, and the only concern that the one-lane bridge has had was this traffic issue. And I think if we could just control that traffic to some extent, even the people proposing a one-lane bridge today would be in support of a two-lane bridge. It just doesn't make sense to have a blind bridge that one has to drive over. I've often wondered how they even move snow off that bridge with these wooden planks and so forth. How does the plow get over there and move snow anywhere? It just strikes me like a very dangerous thing from start to finish. And in uh, 2017, I, th we th I think we deserve better than that kind of a, a, a traffic pattern in this town. The last thing I thought of was when someone suggested in terms of priorities, and maybe Butters Road Bridges and the big priority, I wonder how many of the other priority bridges are one-lane bridges in a very busy part of town. And that might be something people could look at. I would think a one-lane bridge would take priority automatically over virtually any other project that's not also not a one-lane bridge. You know, this is what I'm thinking. In any case, 
I thank uh, the, the, the group for letting me speak. Thank you, sir, for, for coming. Yes, sir, thank you. Good evening. My name is Sean Madden. I live at 81 Butters Row, the far side of Butters Row against the bridge. And I'd just like to share some of the experiences I've had in the few years that I've actually lived there. I'm one of the newer residents to Wilmington, moved here in the last five years, and I absolutely adore the town. But as a, both a runner and a cyclist, I found that some of the most hazardous parts of my ride in the morning are coming out on Butters through Chestnut and getting out of that area and out of that traffic. And I know, understand that the meeting tonight is intended to be focused on the future of the Butters Road Bridge, but the traffic associated with it is a very related problem. And I'd like to share a, uh, an unconventional idea. It sounds like there's a lot of people in support of both having a two-lane bridge and, and probably about an equal number of support of a one-lane bridge as well. But if we look at the fact that the bridge has been around since the 1800s, has it run its course? Can we go through and look at, one, we can't use the bridge now for any heavy traffic. Uh, we can't use it for any large fire trucks or any large ambulances. Uh, and I'd also like to e echo thank you to the police officers here tonight. I have seen an increase in the police presence on Butters Row, and I have seen a, a drop in some of the speed since you've been around. So thank you for that. But have you considered perhaps taking the bridge from a one lane down to only a pedestrian bridge? As it stands now, we st it won't change the fact that it'll restrict the access from emergency services, but it may also provide that solution to the traffic that we're all really concerned about. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sure. My name is Rich Abbott. I live on Elizabeth Drive. I have a handicapped son. I'm in favor for a two-lane bridge, one for safety, two if I got to call 911, the ambulance can get to my son faster. Traffic is an issue. Um, I won't go over that bridge anymore with my personal truck. I have a Dodge Ram. Bridge shakes. Afraid I'm going to fall through it. I want my kids to use the new farm, but I have to drive them there. I can't walk them there. I'm in favor for a two lane bridge and fix the intersection. Thank you, sir. Let's thank you for letting your, me speak. Your, your words. Ma'am, thank you. Hi, I'm Margaret Hayes. I live on Gatehouse Lane, which is in the Chestnut State area. Um, I go over that bridge at least twice a day. Um, I think I am in favor of a two-lane bridge. I think the traffic, we're way past. <laughs> There's way too much traffic already. Um, I heard some of the traffic studies talking about at rush hour in the evening, most of the traffic is coming from 38 over the bridge down Butters Row. Today, I actually called the police because there was so much traffic coming from Chestnut Street toward the bridge down Butters Row that it was no one could get over the bridge. There were so many cars backed up from 38 all the way over the bridge down Butters Row that no one could pass over the bridge from 38. So the traffic was backing up onto 38 behind me. So, th I mean, that's, it's a nightmare. It's just a nightmare. Um, so for safety's sake, um, I do believe a two lane bridge is necessary at this time. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Thank you. My name is John Romano. I live on Burlington Ave a few doors down from Mr. Bendel. Um, I've been there almost 20 years. I am in favor of a two-lane bridge. I use the Butters Road Bridge several times a week. It is a disaster safety-wise. It is a head-on collision waiting to happen. Um, I do agree that we should take a little more comprehensive look of the whole area with traffic-wise. Um, some of the suggestions that have been brought up with maybe restrictions on turns at certain times during the day are certainly worth looking at. Um, they do work in many other um, towns and cities um, around us, and I'm not sure if they'll work perfectly here, but they're at least worth um, taking a look at before we jump in head first. So I think a comprehensive look at it is really important. The traffic is not going away. No matter what we do, the cars are there. They come more and more every day. It takes longer and longer to get um, around town, um, whether it's morning, afternoon, 
Um, evening rush hour, it doesn't matter. But safety has to come first. As the gentleman before me that spoke on this side said he has a handicapped child there, trying to get an ambulance there, that should be paramount in everybody's mind as we want to be able to get public safety vehicles there when needed as fast as we humanly possibly can. And right now we're cutting down an access for public safety vehicles to get to any of that area over there. So those are the reasons why I'm in favor of the two lane bridge, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Romano. Yes, ma'am, thank you for yes. your patience. My name is Barbara Angaro, and I live at 53 Brothers Row, and I've been there 33 years. And I was one of those people that was opposed to the, the double bridge at that time, but I've since changed my mind. Over the years, the traffic has increased regardless, and it gets very unsafe trying to cross that bridge. And I cross it many times during the day, my children do in their cars, and I would like to see the two-lane bridge. The traffic is a problem. We all know that needs to be fixed. The bridge is unsafe, but I think for the record, we need a two-lane bridge there just for safety factors. One day across the street from me, a transformer blew and the fire department came, but the traffic got stopped. I couldn't even get off my street to pick up my daughter because the traffic on the bridge wouldn't allow me to go either way. I was just plain stuck. So it really needs to be, and for the safety vehicles, you knew that you need the two-car bridge. Uh, I do want to commend the police department for their increased uh, patrol. I've noticed them out there. They're usually around my house pulling people over, and I think that's been very good and helpful. But uh, for the record, I'm for the two-lane bridge. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, sir, I see that you have an arm in a sling. I hope you didn't get that going over the bridge. Uh, I would Thank like you. to claim that. That would make my point stronger. Uh, my <coughs> name is David Ragsdale. I live at 18 Marion Street, and uh, we've lived in this uh, neighborhood for the last five years. Uh, I appreciate a lot of the concerns that uh, many of the residents have brought up. Uh, I took my kids for a walk on Chestnut Street once, once, and decided we're not going to do that again. Uh, and there are a lot of other issues, you know, the cross street, main street, Butters Row uh, intersection itself has lots of problems, and, uh, the, and of course the volume of traffic. Uh, but the volume of traffic is probably just not going to change, especially when so many people navigate by GPS these days, people are going to go where they're essentially told to go. And I don't think there's much we can do about that. Uh, but all of these other uh, ancillary problems that kind of stem from this, I think everything needs to come back to. That is, it is insane to have a one lane bridge like the one that we have. Everything should start from, we need a safe two lane bridge here that cars can safely travel over. You try to look at the mirrors when you get sort of near the top of the bridge, but how long can you possibly look at the mirror before you're not watching the road and you have to watch the crest of the bridge to see if someone is gonna be sailing overwards into, uh, into you. And you know, cars meet at the top, now everyone is trying to slowly back away and not grind the guardrail. Uh, I think everything should start with the only thing that makes sense here is a two-lane bridge with some kind of pedestrian access so people can get to Yentile Farm. And from there, we do need to work at a lot of the other traffic issues, but I think everything should flow from that one basic premise. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Ma'am, thank you. Hi, Rachel Salazar. I'm at 43 Towpath. Um, I'm in favor for the one-lane bridge. And I know that there's traffic going through, but I'm not sure why we would want to encourage it more by having a two-lane bridge when people are probably deterred a little bit by a one-lane bridge, but now increasing traffic by having a two-lane bridge, which inevitably I think would ultimately lead to having a traffic light at that intersection. You know, we already complain about all the traffic lights that are already in there disturbing traffic flow, and yet we'd probably have to add another one. Um, we talk about pedestrian access across the bridge, but there are no sidewalks on Butters Row anyway, so I would like to see those folks who are on Chestnut to do this, to maneuver their way through Butters Row as well, because there's really no pedestrian access from that vantage um, either. Um, I do, I do agree the bridge is not safe the way it is, but I do think we have to be pragmatic about it and maybe look at alternate ways to address that. Maybe putting um, markers on the road to say stop here so people can see you in the mirrors or a stop sign or a speed bump right before you, you travel over to reduce the speed. But I think there's ways we can solve the issue without having to redo everything. And you know, I like walking my daughter after work down you know, apple tree and towpath. And I don't want to have to 
take that time after work and have her, you know, listen to cars roll by if she wants to ride her bike. Now I'm worried about her safety at that point because I don't want her to have to worry about a car that's going to come careening around the corner at that point and worry about if she's, you know, if they're going to see her or not. So I don't want to see the bridge change and encourage more traffic through this community. I moved here four years ago because it was a quiet community. It was safe. And with this increased traffic, I don't see that happening. And I really think that the residents who live there who would be impacted it, by it and their quality of life, you know, this really should be considered. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Sir, thank you for your waiting. Sure. Ken Hahn, 37 Mill Road. I've lived where I live for 12 and a half years. I've dealt with Butters Road Bridge nearly every day in the last 12 and a half years. I am 100% in favor of a two-lane bridge. I respect everyone's opinions about the traffic, about how it's changing things on Chestnut Street. I thank the police officers for, for coming tonight, and I would ask them to increase speed enforcement. Um, just the other day, I was behind someone, that flashing sign that's right before the Butters Row Chestnut Street intersection. They were doing 51 miles an hour. Um, I've seen high 40s before where it says 25 and it flashes your speed. I think in the last five years, I've not seen one police officer patrolling actively on Chestnut Street, around Marion Street, by Mill Road, anywhere in that area. I am 100% in favor of a two-lane bridge. I think it's a disaster the way it's set up right now, just waiting to happen, as everyone else has said. The road rage with people flashing, yelling obscenities, backing into me, backing into the guardrails, 100% in favor of a two-lane bridge. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. McDonald. Good evening. I'd like to make a few comments um, about the actual topography of the area, but first I'd like to direct everybody's attention up to the back corner there. Um, at the meeting tonight, we actually have five uniformed officers here tonight, uh, at least three more than should be here. And I hear you people talking about police presence out on Butters Row. I would suggest this. For you people that come to town, e town meeting, I thank you for coming, but I do see a lot of people that don't come to town meeting here tonight, and we vote on millions of dollars yeah, at Ms. town McDonald, meeting. Ms. McDonald, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beg tonight that you stay focused on Butters Road Bridge, subject matter co for conversation. We, we recognize you probably yes. have opinions that are outside of the scope of that, but please stay in that context if I could ask you, sir. Yes, thank you. Um, the only reason I mentioned that, Mr. Shampoo, is that uh, I, I would say the people here should give them 30 seconds to get three cops out on Butters Road right now. Um, or reduce their budget next town meeting. Uh, what I'd like to talk to you about is uh, the topography of the area, um, because um, obviously if you um, want a two-lane bridge and uh, sidewalks, you're gonna have to widen that area. And if I could um, try to create a illustration in your mind tonight, out at that area, we have a raised elevation and we have slopes there. So what might have to happen is there might have to be land takings. And um, we also have drainage uh, to consider. So I would like to have the engineer speak to us tonight about um, the details about the topography. For example, when you widen that, you also have to go out with your slopes so that you can maintain that, um, that grade change. The other thing I'd like to have answered is um, this road is, um, very old road, and I would imagine that there's not a lot of drainage that's um, coming off that area right now that's um, going anywhere designated other than to where it just runs off. And with the new engineering uh, that's gonna be involved there and the compliance with um, uh, you know, the DEP and that sort of thing, I would like to know where you are proposing that drainage go to and have you put any um, effort into uh, figuring out how far those slopes have to go or the extent of the retaining walls um, to maintain that grade change and that, that road widening, Mr. Town Engineer? Uh, address the meeting tonight about that, Mr. Shampoo? Well, yeah, no, I, I, I don't want to. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dare to say uh, some portion of a response that I will absolutely defer uh, to Paul or someone from uh, DPW if they care to uh, compliment it. But I think it might be, it might be premature at this 
juncture to get into a, a substantive discussion of engineering and slope and and uh, you know the, the things that you're talking about, and I recognize you have construction expertise, so uh, you're over my head already. But um, you know, really, if there is a an intent for this organization, for the town, to proceed uh, with some correction to that bridge, I believe that all of the issues that you're raising with regards to drainage and construction and sidewalks and, and everything else will will need to be, by virtue of of the nature of the project, will need to be addressed. And, and uh, uh, well, I'll just leave it at that. Um, I, and I, I'll, I'll ask Mr. Hull perhaps to expand on that, and and, uh, and Paul, if you want to jump in as well. Well, certainly in terms of the engineering, I'm going to defer to uh, Paul Aluni, but I think your point is well taken. The intent tonight is not to engineer this bridge; it's to determine whether or not a bridge uh, should be replaced or uh, essentially serviced. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. It, it's far too premature to, I mean, it's, it's an idea at this point. It's not, uh, it's not even a concept plan. What I will say, though, Mr. McDonald, is um, you made a very good point about the limited right-of-way availability. It's, it, it is an old, um, an old right-of-way, so there's only 40 feet on each side, it, and it's not um, a uniform right-of-way. So I would imagine that, yes, there would be, um, if you were too wide in the bridge to a two-lane bridge, there would be, um, a land taking or, and actually a shifting of the bridge perhaps um, in the northerly direction. Drainage wise, um, far too early to consider, but it would have to be considered um, at the bridge. Right now, Butters Row for the entire length is um, considered country drainage. So there's no real hard structures. It's, there's no curbs. Um, so when rainfall hits the pavement area, the roadway is crowned it just sheds right off to the shoulders of the road and collects at low points, I believe, um, right where the Middlesex Canal formerly crossed. So I would like to, um, Mr. I'm, Shimbu. I'm going to ask you just, I, I promise you I'm coming back to you, Mr. McDonald, and the only reason I'm, I'm asking you to pause is because we have a lady behind Paul um, who, it's 9 o'clock, and she's got her, a young lady with her, and uh, I'm going to offer her the opportunity to speak to the microphone, and then we're going to come back to you, Kevin, if, uh, and I appreciate your patience on that. Thank you, ma'am. I'm Elizabeth Lawrence, and I'm at Five Gatehouse Lane. I'm going to try to keep her away from the microphone so you're all spared a Katy Perry song or two. Um, so I am in favor of a two-lane bridge. Um, the traffic is tough, I admit it, but the traffic is there, and it's not going to go away, and just sort of closing our eyes to that as an issue doesn't solve any problems. It just continues the same ones that we're always having. Shifting the, tra uh, the traffic pattern onto towpath and apple tree is also not solving the problem. It's just moving it from here to here, and that's not helpful either. And can you stand still for me? <laughs> I think the time has come that we should be thinking about a two-lane bridge. We need to think about timing issues as well for the 62 and 38 intersection because that we're being used as a cut through because that light is so tough. Um, I have two small children and the sentiments that have been echoed previously, I, I am anxiously looking forward to the time that they're old enough where I can be like, please get out of my house and ride your bike to Yentile. Mm -hmm. And I can't do that because now I have to send them all the way down Chestnut, then over Burlington Street, then onto Main Street to get to Yentile. I mean, they're going to be real tired when they get home, which will be great, but it's not really safe. So again, I, I'm still in support of a two-lane bridge, and you're probably going to hear from my husband in a minute, who's going to make even stronger points, and I'm hoping she will fall asleep soon. So thank you. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> Mr. McDonald, if you want to continue. Yes, I'll just uh, make one last um, comment. Um, if anybody has ever been over to the um, East Boston Revere section of an area known as Orion Heights, there's a box there that actually has a police officer that actually controls the intersection. And when he sees the traffic needs, um, uh, when traffic is backing up, he'll, he'll change that signal mechanically. And uh, I'd like to propose a temporary um, safety measure for that area right now, since we have 50 cops on our payroll. Um, what, what I would suggest is that Mr. Maselli get us some money from the state to put up a couple signal lights there and have the same mechanical box that they have over at Orion Heights and have one of these officers there 
during the day um, watching for that traffic when, when it's backed up and, and letting the people um, get signaled over that bridge. It will be a, a very simple safety uh, temporary solution just like they're doing over in Orion Heights, Mr. Maselli. So I'll look forward to you making that proposal to the legislature tomorrow. Thank, thank you, Mr. McDonald. Ma'am, thank you. I'm Ruth Moses. I live in 79 Chestnut Street, and I have grandkids that also live in Chestnut Street, and I have to travel, maneuver over to, over that little one-lane bridge twice a day, taking them to preschool and back, and it's scary. <laughs> um, I've actually had my mirror hit on there, um, and I've seen uh, people have to back over and scrape on the side railings when they backed up. Uh, I can't always see it, the mirrors to see what, whether it's safe to go or not. And um, so it just, it just doesn't make sense the way it is. And as far as sidewalks, it would be great. I don't suppose that that's in the offing because of the expense, but I think that would be wonderful for chestnut and butternut. Ms. Moses, I'm sorry, did you say you would support the idea of a, of a two lane? Absolutely. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kim Delling. I live at 136 Marion Street, and I am also in support of a two-lane bridge for safety reasons that we've all seen here tonight, and that looks like a great proposal up there to put some sidewalks over that pedestrian bridge. However, in Wilmington, what we've noticed is the landscape has changed here. I've lived here for nine years. This is no longer a rural town. There is a ton of people, and there's more people moving in. So some of the proposals have people have some great ideas where they think that Limiting time frames and things like that are going to stop the traffic flow. Our biggest issue is at our major intersections, and that's why they're backing up, because we have people cutting down Marion Street to come up to the light on the other side of 62 that have figured out, hey, that light isn't as long. So it's the traffic's everywhere. We've, we're cut through for all these towns, but we have options, and it's traffic flow options. And for the people that don't see the police out there all the time, I see them every, I travel Butters Road Bridge every day at least four times a day. I'm a real estate agent, I'm out all the time. Those guys are on Butters Road Bridge, they're over there all the time, they're on my street on Marion, they're down on Chestnut. I see them, they've got people pulled over, they're doing everything that they can right now. And for the people that have lived here forever, I get it. It used to be a very small, quiet town, that's why the roads are small, but we're not that anymore. We're almost the size of a city. And we really have to, as a town, stop planning for that. That's what we have. Our roads are small, and we do have to protect our children and figure out how we do some of this. But I have sidewalks on Marion Street. I have five accidents in front of my house easily in the wintertime because people coming around the curve, coming too fast, bang off there, lose their tires. It's all over the town. It's not just Butters Row. And it is noisy, and I hear it from where I am. I hear the train on Marion Street. But that's part of, unfortunately, growing and development. And there's 30 houses coming on my street. There's 26 down on Chestnut. There's the proposal on Main Street. We have to before. This bridge absolutely has to take priority now. The town has to do something about it. But we also have to look at the entire street light scenario that we have going on. Because if the flow of traffic starts moving, they're not going to use these cut-throughs. They're only doing it because they have to wait. If I have to come up 38 and go over the 62 bridge when I come home at night, it's 45 minutes for me to get home. And over the Butters Row Bridge, obviously, five minutes. So it's a huge change. So if you guys could marry that with the sight line issue off across of street, because that telephone pole is the issue we can't see to the right, and then work our traffic patterns, we're gonna see a decrease in all of these side roads. So if you could support the two lane, that would be great. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am. Sir. Hi, uh, my name is Anton Lawrence. I live at Five Gatehouse Lane as well. Um, we moved here a little less than a year ago, so I'm junior to everybody else in the room. But um, I wanted to make one point, you know, as somebody who went over it the first time, um, not knowing it was there when I went to look at my house, you know, not knowing that, you know, that area. The first time you go over that bridge, if you've never been over it before, is, is, is it opens your mind. It's like, yeah. this is crazy. Uh, why would this, why, how is this possible that it's still, still in, you know, in this manner? Um, 
One point I'd like to make to the folks who are really in support of keeping it a one lane. You, you keep it a one lane and you lose essentially any option to do anything in the future. I mean, it, you know, the, the, the bridge is an abomination really for what it is right now. Um, but you make it a two lane bridge and you can do things about traffic problems. I mean, that problem has been solved millions of times all over this country and all over the state. Right now, you know, the, with that being a one lane bridge, you're not getting, people aren't gonna be going down that street less. It's only gonna be more, and it's gonna be, you know, 2,700 is, is way over what you have, you know, what that road is capable of, and it's just gonna grow. It's not gonna get less. Um, and then I think I had one question. Uh, I think I looked up um, the work they do, they're scheduled to do um, this, this summer, they're hoping to do this summer. They recently did that work before. I mean, you can just nod, right? So that was only, what, three or four years ago? Two, two years ago, three. So, I mean, really, you know, the state's, you know, basically band-aiding this bridge. So they're gonna go do this work. They'll close down the bridge. You know, we'll all be going around. Everybody that lives back there will be going around for a while. And then two years from now, we're all gonna be doing it again. So, um, you know, it's really just a matter of time before this is a real problem and it's time to fix it. So, two lane bridge, please. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Ms. Thomas. Hi, good evening. I'm Anita Thomas. I live at 9 Fenway Street, which is um, an offshoot of Marion Street. I've lived in Wilmington since 2001, um, so a little over 16 years now. Um, my first 10 years living in Wilmington, I refused to drive over the Butters Road Bridge. Um, my husband would do it. it. He thought it was a great shortcut to alleviate traffic on 62 to get to our house. Um, it's only in the last six or seven years where I started using it, and I probably use it a maximum of five times per year if it's you know an emergency I need to get home or I need to get somewhere with my kids. Um, that being said, I have three children, um, twins that are 16, they just got their permit, and a nine-year-old. I'm so excited that Yentil Farm is open. Um, I haven't had time yet to go <laughs> check it out, but my younger son plays soccer, and I can absolutely see ha having my older boys drive him over to the park, either to play basketball or to play soccer, and my boys tend to do what dad does, not what mom suggests. So they're going to want to go over Butters Row when mom says, no, take the long way, take 62, and I'm afraid of that happening. Um, I love the neighborhood that I, that I live in. Um, it's very charming, very old world. I lived in England for two years. I have relatives in Poland, so I've driven on narrow, windy roads. Um, but the fact is, we are sandwiched between 93, 128, and Route 3. We have residents from Reading, Woburn, Billerica, Burlington, um, not only residents, but people who work in those communities using Wilmington as a cut through. When they connected Marion Street Extension with Marion Street, which I live off of, traffic increased dramatically. And Marion Street is also a narrow, windy road, but we don't have the privilege of having a yellow stripe down the road as Chestnut and Butters Road do. And to think that a one-lane bridge is going to be a deterrent to traffic is naive. Um, people are using it. And with Eleanor Estates building 30-something houses, and if you estimate a minimum of two cars per house, so that's 70 cars of extra traffic that's going to be coming down my road, Marion Street, let alone Chestnut or Butters Row. And then you have the other development further down Chestnut, which I'm not sure what's that called, additional cars, and plus being used as a cut through. It is just so unsafe knowing that Butters Row goes onto a main road, Route 38. It needs to become a two-lane bridge. Um, and to address the traffic in, in town, <laughs> again, when I go to the lights at Chestnut Street, if I have to take one of my children to the high school or pick them up at 4.30, 5 o'clock, I give myself 30 minutes. It takes me over 20 minutes just to get to the lights at 129. So, Sadly, my new cut through, which is faster, is I turn left onto 62 towards Burlington, cut through, this is Carter Lane, right? Go towards the McDonald's, around Market Basket, down Middlesex to get to the high school, because that's faster for me than sitting on Route 62. So I realize that 62, 38, and 129 are all state roads. Is there some sort of collaboration with the state to fix light problem, traffic problem, traffic studies? What is Wilmington doing about that? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Uh, 
to, to that point, um, you know, interacting with the state uh, for signalization or traffic flow patterns and controls, you know, this, this question has come up in the past and I've certainly asked it. I don't know, Jeff, if you have firsthand experience in working with them, if you could speak to that. Well, uh, two things. First of all, with regard to uh, addressing the signalization in, uh, throughout town, as was mentioned earlier by the uh, Public Works Director, uh, we are finalizing the uh, plan for uh, signalization at various locations throughout town. Uh, some intersections that don't, do not currently have uh, traffic signals have been evaluated as well as uh, existing intersections with uh, signals. So uh, th that is a long-term process. Unfortunately, none of these things that we're talking about tonight are going to be done within, an, uh, within the next fiscal year. Uh, but with respect to the traffic, uh, the intersections, again, the plan is to identify uh, the worst uh, intersections in terms of uh, the, the level of accidents and congestion there and then begin to put money aside in the uh, capital budget uh, to address these intersections on a, a scheduled basis over the course of the next many years. So uh, that is one of the uh, uh, approaches we're taking to deal with intersections. With respect to uh, working with the state, uh, clearly we uh, look to do that whenever possible, uh, certainly uh, with Representative Maselli's assistance, uh, being a senior legislator, uh, that's helpful working with Senator Tarr and uh, Rep. Uh, Gordon. Uh, we're always looking to, uh, for their assistance. And then just administratively, uh, the uh, Public Works Department has very good relationships with Mass DOT. So we are constantly in conversation with them about uh, many of these issues. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Sir, thank you for, your wait, for waiting. Uh, David Moses, uh, 79 Chestnut Street. Uh, while we wait for a two-lane bridge tied in with some sort of an intersection uh, rework, I would suggest, uh, as was mentioned earlier, uh, some, si some sort of a, a stoplight arrangement to alternate traffic across this one-lane bridge. Uh, I've seen it work very well in construction sites. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't work uh, for the bridge. That would at least bring some sanity to the uh, uh, two-way traffic across that bridge while the construction is underway. Thank you, sir. Appreciate the suggestion. Jeez, I think we're in the home stretch here. <laughs> Mr. Neville, thank you. Hi, it's Scott Neville, 215 Chestnut Street. Um, I just want to echo what a lot of my neighbors have said tonight. Um, I am in favor of a two-lane bridge. Um, People go over it now as a one-lane bridge. That's not going to stop. Traffic's bad. It's not going to go away. Um, if speed is an issue, I, I like the suggestion. I don't know if it's feasible for the town to do, but speed bumps, you know, on Butters Row maybe, if it's really a bad issue there. Um, but the, uh, I mean, my main point is the traffic's there. It's not going to go away until, you know, we figure it away on Main Street. Um, so I'm in favor of two-lane bridge. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Neville. Sir, Hello. thank you. Matt Devlin, uh, 5 Apple Two Lane. Um, I want to say that I'm 110% in favor of a two-lane bridge because so I've been here for almost 23 years. And I don't have my license yet, but it's scary because like I, I walk all the time. I've, been, I've walked to Monarch Basket probably 30, 36 times at least. Uh, and to get to AJ's or uh, Kitchen or, uh, or, or like the Yentala Park safely, I have to go all the way down Chestnut, uh, down Burlington Ave, and then right on Main Street, like about a mile, just to get to one destination, you know what I'm saying? So I'm in favor of a two-lane bridge. Thank you, Mr. Devil. I think, if I'm not mistaken, Everyone who has the desire to have their voice heard on this subject has done so. Um, I want to, uh, before we close down uh, this part of the conversation, first and foremost say, uh, nice job. Uh, really, everybody who uh, had their uh, different differences of opinions, I thought it was a very substantive conversation. Uh, and uh, we flushed out quite a bit of conversation. I think there was some very good ideas put out on the table. 
Uh, so thank you all for being here and for waiting. I know it's a, it's a, it's a long meeting, so congratulations to you for participating in this part of the process. And, um, you know, I think there will be more to discuss as we go forward. Uh, I wanted to go back to the Board of Selectmen here. Uh, there's, we've, we've all heard a lot of comments. Um, you're not obligated, obviously, to say anything, but if there's additional feedback or conversation from the members up here, I wanted to open that up uh, for possibility. Yes, Mr. Loud. Mr. Chairman, um, again, um, I appreciate everyone's input. I learned a lot tonight, I will tell you all that. What I did learn is um, majority is are in favor of a two-lane bridge as am I now, but under one caveat, that we do do a traffic study improvement of 38 and 62 bridge lights, Chestnut and Burlington Ave. And with the, in the back here, with the road, road improvements um, that are gonna be proposed. And yeah, this isn't gonna happen overnight, but I really think a two lane bridge is gonna be best for that area with sidewalks. Uh, Mr. Woods said it was gonna be expensive. Safety doesn't have a price in my price tag. So I think um, whatever gets done on Chestnut and Butters Row, they need to have sidewalks and um, with the two lane bridge. That's my opinion and if I was asked to vote tonight, that's the way I'm gonna go, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Loud. Uh, Mr. Um, I, 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 just, I, don't, I don't mind saying, I, I wanted to listen to everybody over, Overwhelmingly, there's a lot more folks that in favor of a two-lane bridge as opposed to a one-lane bridge, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. I got to give that gentleman credit. I don't know why none of us ever thought of that. You got the one-lane bridge, you know. I, I just is a brainstorm, and it, you know how you go to New Hampshire, the White Mountains, they have many single-lane bridge, and there's a red light and a green light. It makes you stop and go over. For the love of me, I don't know why we never thought of that. And I got to say, touche to you. You know, that's it's amazing. You know, and uh, I've seen it now that you said that, and. Uh, you know, I want to take a look at everything, and I, and I think I'm going to end up probably going with the two-lane bridge. Uh, some folks I wanted the single-lane bridge, and the majority of them wanted the double-lane bridge. And I said earlier, I know a lot's happened. And back in 87, I was on the board, and all the residents wanted a single-lane bridge. And I know traffic's increased, and time has moved on, and I know it's a big concern. And I myself, being semi-retired these days, uh, selling my business, I drive around the town a lot. I'm out. I talk to folks in neighborhoods around Expedex down Butters Row, Chestnut Street, and it is. It's kind of difficult going over that bridge. You gotta lay on a horn. It's not like something I just woke up and realized last week. I've known it for years, but the climate has changed. And whether it's a single lane bridge or double lane bridge, we gotta do what's safe for the residents. And obviously the message is loud and clear tonight that folks are more in favor of a double lane bridge, and I see that. And uh, I just thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. McCoy. I'm going to just go in line here, and I, again, I don't. No one's obligated to speak, but I, I felt I feel compelled to offer my thoughts and feedback, and uh, similar, I think, to my colleagues that have spoken so far. Uh, I had came into this meeting uh, feeling like the two-lane bridge made sense from a safety perspective, um, recognizing that uh, the potential would be there um, for for an increase in traffic access, and I heard it multiple times throughout the evening that that one lane bridge as it stands now is not as much of a deterrent as, as I guess I was thinking it was. Um, that folks are using that bridge irrespective of the fact that it's tremendously unsafe. Um, and so uh, if folks are gonna be using that bridge anyway, let's make a safe bridge. Um, so that's my, my gut feel on this. Uh, that said, um, I would only support it, and I don't know who it was, I wrote down here, but someone had said I would support the two-lane bridge only in the conjunction or in conjunction with a full and comprehensive study of how we can mitigate traffic in and around that region. I think they have to go hand in hand. Was it you, sir? Thank you very much. Um, I think that's, that's mission critical, and Jeff, I, I don't know if you uh, feel, can feel the same way, but um, neither of those two things, I think, can happen uh, in a vacuum. I think they have to happen together, and I hope that they will. Uh, I don't, gentlemen, I don't know if anybody here wants to speak or. Yeah, no, I, I just want to thank you all for uh, the constructive comments that uh, everybody made uh, tonight. Um, I'm hearing the same thing. Uh, I'm supportive of a two lane bridge. Uh, I grew up on Chestnut Street, 188 Chestnut Street. I remember years ago, up in the front part towards uh, Burlington Ave, there was actually an S curve. If some of you lived way back when, with, uh, when I grew up and they straightened that area out, actually, so they, to make it safer. Uh, Marion Street didn't connect. Um, but there was always traffic. I mean, back then, though, we did ride our bikes and play basketball on the street, believe it or not. There was a Hus farm, and, 
and there was a chicken farm that we grew up beside. But things have changed, uh, and we have to go with the change. We have to be more progressive. Uh, we should uh, take care of that area. We have uh, the state coming in, looking at Cross Street, Main Street. Now's the time to do it, to put it all together in one package uh, so that it comes out right, and that's the main thing. If we're going to do it, we have to do it right. Uh, so I am in favor of the two-lane bridge. Thank you, Mr. Kyra. Yeah, Mr. Hall. Randall. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate everybody uh, also coming out. I know it's a, it's a lot to come out and on your busy schedules, and I appreciate you being here. I tried to take notes on almost everybody's comments. I believe I have 29 that spoke. And as I mentioned at the beginning, I really think that this shouldn't be a five-member board of selectmen decision. It's obviously got to be a community decision. So I appreciate the input, and obviously uh, there is an overwhelming uh, desire to pursue the possibility of a two-lane bridge. Um, I share the same safety concerns that everyone does. I grew up in the town uh, myself. I don't go back as far as some of my colleagues, but uh, I do uh, also grew up with the traffic. I live with the traffic, um, and that's a concern that also that stands out tonight uh, in my notes from folks is that not only do we certainly need to address the bridge, uh, but we need to address the traffic in this area, in other areas of town, and uh, any, any, any areas that we can identify that we can make uh, less traffic for the residents. Um, I live on Burlington Ave, as I mentioned myself, so I'm familiar with the traffic, but uh, that stands out to me in the notes that I took tonight, um, that not only do people want a two-lane bridge, let's take a look at what we can do to uh, decrease some of the traffic uh, if we can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. Uh, I wanted to uh, turn the microphone over to Town Manager Jeff Hall. There were a few folks that uh, couldn't be here this evening, uh, but sent letters in uh, and to, to have their opinion heard. Uh, and because they went through the, the time and energy of, of writing these, these letters, I'm gonna ask Jeff to read them into the record. So I have uh, uh, one email from a Kim Lang. A any hope of making the bridge two lanes? I would have liked to have come to the town meeting uh, to hear the discussion on the bridge, but I am due with my second child two days before and probably won't make it. Thanks. Uh, t <laughs> Thomas uh, DiCarlo, uh, I am a resident in Wilmington on Marion Street and wanted to voice my opinion on the Butters Row Bridge Project. Uh, I, for one, am in favor of the new bridge and widening the bridge to allow traffic to flow. The street is also too narrow and should have sidewalks. I wonder if the town would consider sidewalks on Butters Row and over the bridge. I look forward to the town meeting concerning the project. I have a email. Uh, this is uh, looking for a uh, 8 Towpath Drive, um, Kim, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Karen uh, Rosania. Uh, as 23-year resident of Wilmington, we uh, would like to express our strong support for a new two-lane Butters Row Bridge. The bridge is a disaster waiting to happen. It's unsafe, and we have witnessed uh, near fatalities because cars speed over it without any regard for cars waiting on the other side. We have also witnessed road rage on the bridge with drivers not wanting to wait their turn to cross over the bridge. We would also like to see a sidewalk on Butters Row uh, so families uh, can safely access the new Yentile Farm Recreational Park. Thank you, uh, Karen and Rick. Uh, then uh, finally, uh, uh, an email here from Ronald Gould. Uh, unfortunately, I have a conflict on Monday night, would not be able to attend the Board of Selectmen's meeting, but as a Butters Row resident, I wanted to give my uh, input about the topic of Butters Row Bridge. I have mixed feelings about, the wa of, about widening the bridge. On the one hand, I'm sure that the single lane bridge keeps some traffic from going down Butters Row as a downtown bypass, and certainly the traffic is busy enough as is. On the other hand, however, I am concerned about the safety factor at the bridge. Every time my wife and I approach the bridge from either direction, uh, we cross our fingers and hope that some reckless person doesn't come speeding over from the other side to get to the top of, uh, before uh, we do and uh, make it down, uh, make it back uh, or worse. Uh, they either don't know how to use the mirrors or just don't care, probably the latter. Uh, the one lane bridge also causes traffic jams, making it difficult to go out or come back home at rush hour. I wish there were a way to have our cake and eat it too. Example, a safe bridge and limited traffic, but I don't have a practical solution. Uh, then he notes uh, signal lights as a question mark. 
I know that many of our neighbors would rather not widen the bridge due to the expected increased volume of traffic, and I respect their position. However, if the bridge is widened, which we uh, think is best for safety reasons, uh, there needs to be continued slash improved traffic control, i.e. police presence, et cetera, on the street or a better solution to limiting traffic if possible. Thank you, Mr. Hull. Um, so I'll, I guess, call the, that portion of our, our meeting concluded at this point. Um, for those that were here that will watch the rebroadcast and those that are still here, uh, pay attention and, and stay tuned, I guess. Uh, the next steps will be uh, we will work, the town will work uh, very closely with MassDOT uh, to evaluate what our options are, what the town's options are, uh, and to begin the process to set the stage for moving in that direction. Um, so there will be more information coming out to the community as soon as there is information to share. Uh, and I, again, we thank you for your feedback, your input, and your patience in going through this process with us this evening. Please. Uh, just uh, for my own uh, clarification, is it fair to say at this point that the board is of the opinion that we ought to pursue uh, the two-lane option uh, and, and do whatever is necessary to take that course? Just to be clear. Um, do, uh, I would ask my colleagues here uh, if we think that is, uh, should, uh, ought we take a vote uh, or, or have the words that we offered a moment ago um, been an effective communication I'm, to that point? I'm in favor of a two-lane bridge with uh, sidewalk. Same here. Is that fair to say? Mr. McCoy, second, are for you the, second for the discussion. I agree. If you're going to do a two-lane bridge, not only sidewalks, we're going to have to take a look at the intersection. We're going to have to take a look at other aspects as right. well, you know. But more so, the sidewalks. And the only way that's going to happen is there's going to have to be some land taken with folks. Right. And once again, a woman did say, or somebody did say, or somebody did mention earlier, that everyone has to be on board. That's the bottom line. One person doesn't want to do it. Ain't going to happen. And I say that word. Ain't going to happen. So uh, that's the only way. Because you have to widen the road. And I'll just say this. Wildwood Street, a couple other streets we put sidewalks. I don't know if we had any land takings or not, but I've seen some roads in this community with some sidewalks, and the roads became a little bit more narrow, especially on Wildwood Street. When you go over that bend where the bridge is, and if you're not paying attention, you've got that Cape Cod berm, you can almost roll over the sidewalk. And if somebody was walking there, because I, like I say, I travel around the town all the time, so I hope if we're gonna do it, we do it right. So j just to be clear, uh, it, it's my understanding, and certainly uh, Mike Woods or uh, Jamie McGaldy or, or Paul Aluni jump in here if I'm misstating anything, but the, uh, the direction or the, uh, the sense that we've been getting from MassDOT is that there needs to be consensus from the community, from the elected officials, from the uh, residents uh, that this, a particular course of action uh, is what we're seeking. They're not expecting us to have unanimity, but certainly a prevailing opinion. And it would seem to me tonight, certainly from those who uh, spoke to us as residents and the, the board, that we have that. If we have a unanimous decision from the Board of Selectmen and the legislators who are on board, uh, I would say that we stand a very good chance of moving to the next step with Mass Todd. I would say that I, I, I stand in favor of it as well, um, but, but I want to, MassDOT will be the responsible party, the party that we will work with, and, and I think we should make sure we, we avail ourselves of Mr. Maselli's offer to uh, help uh, that spur that project along in, in the eyes of DOT. Uh, but that being said, there are a number of related aspects to this overall project that maybe fall outside of DOT that I don't want to lose sight of here in, in the town of Wilmington, and that, that falls squarely on you and your team and, and, and yours. So, you know, in as much as I think you have the marching orders to proceed with DOT, let's make sure we keep our eye on the ball here in town with, with our, our resources as well. Is that a, a fair right. assessment, Mr. Bender? I just want to, on one note under discussion, if we could, if we're going to have this on a, pursue this on a future meeting, that we could invite somebody from Mass DOT to be here to address the community. I, I think at this point it makes a ton of sense. I think it might have been uh, perhaps premature or, or you know, we, we needed to have this conversation um, and it was, uh, I think, appropriate to have that conversation tonight. Uh, now that we've come to the point where we are in the sand, I think it, uh, it makes sense, Greg, and I would support that as well. So we'll, uh, we'll look to identify who that individual is and get them on board. Is that a, a fair? Thank you. Is that okay, Mark? Yeah. Thank you. 
So Jeff, do you feel you have yeah. marching orders there? Good. Uh, with that said, Jeff, I'll, I'll ask you to move to the next line, uh, communications. Uh, first under communications is a memo uh, from Valerie Gingrich, uh, Director of Planning and Conservation, uh, with regard uh, to the uh, Butters Row Bridge. Uh, this is dated June 7th, and it notes, uh, last night at the regularly scheduled planning board meeting, uh, the board took up discussion of the Butters Row Bridge in anticipation of the Board of Selectmen's meeting scheduled for June 12th. The board discussed road safety and traffic circulation in town and decided to express their unanimous support for the reconstruction of the Butters Row Bridge as a two-lane bridge. Thank you. You have the mics. I'm just going to turn it over to you. Uh, next is a memo uh, for me to, uh, to the Board of Selectmen uh, Finance Committee appointments at a posted meeting of the appointing committee held on Thursday, June 8, 2017. Teresa Manganelli and John Doherty were reappointed to three-year terms on the Finance Committee. Uh, the commi the uh, committee appointed Neil Couture uh, to replace the seat held by Robert Palmer for three year for a three-year term on the Finance Committee. Thank you, and I, I would just like to go on record and say uh, uh, congratulations uh, and thank you to both uh, Teresa and John for their continued service to the Finance Committee. And I also wanted to thank uh, Neil Couture for stepping up uh, and uh, submitting his name, and I'm glad that he's going to be able to serve the town in this capacity. Thank you. Uh, next under correspondence is, uh, is a letter from uh, Eric Duffy, is the community manager for Relay for Life. Uh, this uh, went out to the neighbors uh, over at the uh, high school uh, complex uh, just in advance of the uh, Relay for Life, which will be happening the 16th and 17th of June. Uh, he notes in part the Relay for Life consists of teams of co-workers, families, and neighbors coming together for 12 hours to walk uh, the track to raise awareness uh, of and funds for American Cancer Society. The teams pitch tents and stay overnight uh, to mirror cancer patients' journey through treatment for one night. The spirit of the relay uh, is truly amazing. Uh, he notes that the Wilmington Police and Fire have been informed of the event. We will be in uh, communication with them in case of uh, any issues arise. Uh, and goes on to say, if you have any questions or concerns prior to the event, please call Eric Duffy at the American Cancer Society, 781-314-2665. For questions and concerns during the event, please contact Eric uh, Duffy at... Uh, 802-735-6786. Thank you, Jeff. We're looking forward to the Relay for Life. There are some board to consider items on the agenda, the first one being a common victualers license for Ponchos Incorporated, doing business as Ponchos Cantina for property at 306 Balladville Street, Unit 7. Jeff. Uh, you will recall this came up uh, at the last Selectman's meeting. Uh, with respect to the alcohol license which the board uh, approved at that time and in fact the uh, health director had not had an opportunity to uh, speak with representatives about or uh, finalize uh, the inspections uh, with regard to health issues. Uh, she does however have a recommendation tonight. She notes I recommend approval of the application for common victualers license submitted by Ponchos Inc. DBA Ponchos Cantina at 206 Balladvale Street we also have a recommendation from Al Spaulding, a building inspector. After review and consideration of the Town of Wilmington bylaw and all applicable codes, I have no outstanding zoning issues with the above referenced uh, business. Thank you. Is, uh, questions, comments, or a motion, please? I'll make a motion that we grant the uh, common vehicular license to Ponchos Inc. doing business as Ponchos Cantina for property located at 306 Balladvale Street, Unit 7. Second. I have a motion made and seconded. Is there discussion? There is, uh, Mr. Chair, if Thank I may. You. I just want to, for folks out there, I think they indicated at the last meeting that they're hoping for a fall opening. Is that correct? That is my understanding, yes. Okay, so just for residents who have been asking that they're hoping to open this Mexican restaurant in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, and I just want to um, say that I am looking forward to the Mexican restaurant, but I'm going to abstain because it's my understanding that uh, my brother is involved as a consultant with the property owner, so 
Uh, that's why I didn't vote at the last meeting. Uh, people couldn't understand why I was in favor of it, but didn't vote. So that's that's the reason. Thank you for that, Mr. Kyron. Uh, that being said, I would uh, accept. Uh, I'm sorry. The motion it has been made and seconded. All in favor? Four with one abstain. Thank you. The next in line for the board to consider is a request of Kristen Stokes for a uh, residence of Jacobs Street to have a neighborhood block party on Saturday, June 17th from 2 p.m. until 9 p.m. Jeff. Uh, this is uh, uh, a request for a block party. As was noted, there's been um, uh, several of these over the years uh, from uh, the Stokes family. Uh, the recommendations are uh, from the uh, public works, no issues with the residential residence request, uh, also no issues from police or fire. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, I would uh, accept a motion to approve the block party. Move to grant the request. Seconded. I have a motion made and seconded. Is there discussion? I see none. Uh, all in favor of granting the request? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Next on the list uh, is a request of Sherry Palmasano for residents of Lucaya Circle to have a neighborhood block party on Saturday, August 12th from 12 p.m. until 11 p.m. Jeff. Again, these, uh, this request has been uh, reviewed uh, by police, fire, and DPW, and, and none of the departments have any concerns with regard to this block party. Thank you. Do I have a motion? So moved. I have a motion here and a second. Yes, is there discussion? I see none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Next on the list of board to consider ratifying the town manager's appointment of Robert Oliveri to the Wilmington Commission on Disabilities. Jeff, would you like to highlight it more? Uh, yes, uh, after the, um, the, the prior meetings, uh, you, you'll recall he was being considered uh, for a post on the Board of Appeals. Uh, I reached out to him uh, to uh, find out if he'd be interested in serving on the uh, Disabilities Commission. Uh, and suggested that perhaps he have a conversation with uh, Dee Janetti, who is the uh, chair of the Disabilities Commission. Uh, he did have a conversation, got back to me shortly thereafter, indicated he was interested in serving. Uh, so uh, I did uh, appoint him, again, subject to the board's uh, ratification. Thank you. I think the members of the board here will remember Mr. Oliveri from uh, when he appeared before us. Is there a motion? Uh, so moved. Motion has made and seconded. Discussion? I'd just take up the discussion and say uh, thank you to Mr. Oliveri for, uh, for staying in the game in spite of it uh, not, not working out for the Board of Appeals. Uh, he was, has a, an accomplished resume and I'm delighted that he accepted uh, this, this appointment by Jeff. So the motion has been made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm sorry, we had, it's not last. Uh, next is a board to consider executing a drainage easement agreement for 40 Burlington Ave. I'll ask Jeff to highlight us on the details here, please. One of the things the engineering department has doing, uh, been doing over the last uh, couple of years is uh, looking at uh, various instances where we have infrastructure that may uh, be on uh, private property or have elements of it that are on private property. I think in years past there was essentially, essentially a gentleman's agreement that uh, that we would have access to maintaining uh, those uh, elements of the infrastructure. Uh, but one of the things that we're looking to do is formalize these now in the way of um, uh, these easement agreements. Uh, this particular one uh, deals with a drainage uh, easement at 40 Burlington Ave. Uh, and the owner, uh, James Newhouse Jr., has expressed a desire to enter into an agreement uh, with the town. Uh, as Paul notes in his uh, memo, uh, an existing municipal drain line currently traverses the aforementioned parcel. The drain line collects runoff from Burlington Ave and discharges to a wetland system behind the parcel. Uh, the owner is willing to grant the town the 
uh, exclusive uh, permanent easement for one dollar to operate and maintain the select this section of the town's drainage infrastructure. So it's it's his recommendation, certainly mine, <coughs> that the town uh, enter into this agreement, and it would require a vote of the board and your execution of the easement. So maybe you just said it, and I didn't hear it right. Uh, we've been maintaining this uh, this drainage uh, area for a number of years, and with this is just a, a, an, a, an exercise to formalize that agreement. That's right. Thank you very much. Uh, I would accept a motion to approve the drainage easement for 40 Burlington Ave. So moved. I have a second. Made and seconded for discussion. Is there any? I see none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. And last is a drainage easement for 21 North Street. Again, this is a similar situation, uh, slightly different uh, uh, circumstance. This is a roadway easement agreement, uh, and it deals with uh, property at 21 North Street. A uh, portion of the existing roadway shoulder for North Street currently encroaches on the aforementioned parcel. The owner is willing to grant the town uh, the exclusive permanent easement for $1 to operate and maintain this section of the town's roadway infrastructure. So as uh, was noted previously, we've been dealing with it on an informal basis. Uh, it makes sense to do to formalize it in the way of a roadway easement. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, our, I would accept a motion to approve the easement uh, drain, uh, drain. I'm sorry, roadway easement uh, at 21 North Street. So moved. Thank you. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Is there discussion? Questions. I see none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We are under public comments. Would anyone uh, offer any questions or commentary? Anyone at all? Just anyone. Please step right up. Oh, Mr. McDonald, yes. Good evening. Um, I have a few subject matters that I'd like to address tonight or see if the board would address. Um, first of all, I want to thank Mr. McCoy for identifying the potential development of the uh, Expedex site. Um, I'd like to point out that um, one of the reasons why um, this potential there for a 40B project is because of the tremendously high industrial taxes. Um, Mr. Loud um, pointed out during a debate that he'd like to try to do something about alleviating the taxes. But since Mr. Loud has been on the board, I haven't seen one single um, item on the agenda that actually deals with um, any kind of motivation to lower taxes. So on this particular subject matter, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to s uh, ask Mr. Loud what his intentions are when it, when it comes to actually putting forth some type of agenda item to lower taxes so that industrial uh, tenants and um, people like the Teamsters aren't losing their jobs because of um, a desire to sell a building and, and develop it for a 40B project. So uh, I guess the simple question is, uh, what's planned for agenda items to lower taxes? Uh, Mr. Loud, it's uh, your dis the decision to respond to that if you care to. I'm sorry? No comment. Very no well. Comment. Uh, anything else? Yeah. Um, the board has a policy um, that I believe is a failure, and that is the um, carry in and carry out policy um, for products going into recreation sites in the town beach. Um, as I've been reading social media, I've been seeing numerous um, calls to police how um, there's a tremendous amount of trash in that area. So obviously your policy of carry in, carry out has failed and since we have receptacles in behind the DPW building. Uh, can the board take a vote tonight to change that policy, put some trash receptacles down there so the DPW doesn't have to spend all day raking up trash when people can just put it in a, in a trash receptacle? Thank you, uh, Mr. McDonald. I appreciate your uh, monitoring the uh, social media sites on our behalf, um, but um, unless, I, unless I hear someone on this board willing to take a vote, I'm fairly certain we're not prepared to do so. Uh, one last point. To, not, not prepared to alleviate the trash or litter problem? Anything else? 
Um, yes, um, I'd like to make a comment. I spoke to Mr. Maselli um, tonight before he left, and uh, he said that if you had a called him, he would have made a call to the DPW or the um, um, Mass Highway or Department of Transportation, and he would have had somebody here tonight. So uh, I'd encourage you to utilize your resource of a state representative so that um, when we have a meeting like this, it can be better attended by authority figures such as uh, Mass Highway. Um, so um, you, that's about all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, to address that particular point, uh, th the fact that Mass DOT was not here was by design, uh, as was stated at the outset of the meeting. Uh, Mass DOT, the conversations that have been had between Mike Woods and Paul Looney with their uh, representatives at DOT, the message came back that they're not looking to uh, be at a meeting uh, until they have some sense as to whether the town has a particular direction to follow. So uh, it wasn't an issue of uh, sliding the representative. Uh, it wasn't an oversight. It was by design that there was no need to have DOT here tonight because the intent was really to determine whether the town uh, wanted to take a particular course of action. And DOT will be involved from this day forth, uh, we can assure you. Uh, so uh, next is uh, new business or items that could not reasonably be anticipated by me 48 hours in advance of this meeting. Uh, so um, yeah, Mr. Bendel, please start us off. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I realize it's getting late, but we haven't met in a couple weeks, so I have a few items if you'll bear with me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, everybody who came out from the Memorial Day Parade. I thought it was an excellent event. I'd like to thank our veterans agent, Lucy Maglia, who put on a great event, and also to our public safety, uh, who always do a tremendous job. And obviously, it was a great uh, tribute to our uh, veterans, those who are serving, and those uh, fallen heroes who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. So thank you for a great day. Uh, congratulations again to Wilmington High and Shawshank Tech graduates. I'd like to encourage everybody to join me and other members of the board to, uh, on uh, Friday, uh, the 16th, for the Relay for Life. It's going to be at Wilmington High School. It's a great event. It starts at 5.30. Uh, it's not too late to uh, contribute. Uh, there's no uh, contribution too big or so, too small. I'd like to encourage everybody to, uh, to get involved in some way, whether attending the event, which is an excellent event. Uh, it's a great community event. We're welcoming the town of Arica this year. We're partnering with them. And um, it's a great way to get out and meet folks and uh, have a great time. There's something for everybody at this event. I'd like to congratulate also uh, Mr. Couture and Mr. Oliveri on their new uh, uh, positions within the town. And I compliment them on their volunteerism um, and I would also encourage anyone else who's interested in, in getting involved to reach out to us and hopefully we can uh, set you up in, an, in a uh, worthy spot. Uh, I'd like to also uh, had a discussion with the manager a week or two ago and just update folks that we did have 10 people who applied for the substance abuse uh, coordinator position and they're currently being uh, interviewed uh, and vetted through a, a worthy committee. And so I look forward to the town uh, finalizing that position in the next couple weeks so that we can have somebody to assist residents of Wilmington um, as soon as possible. And lastly, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may, I'd like to uh, see if we could put on a future uh, item for discussion. Is a, I know it's kind of early, it's only June, but it won't be long before the manager is putting his uh, budget together for next year. And if we could have a conversation amongst the board members here in the near future about items that we may be able to uh, make cuts to or to balance for next year's budget so we can, in an effort to try to save some money for the taxpayers uh, and the residents uh, next spring. And uh, I think that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bendel. We will indeed uh, take that up as a, at a future meeting and I will we'll get it in as quickly as we can. Mr. Kylie. Yeah, I'd uh, echo Mr. Bendel's uh, comments. Memorial Day uh, Parade was wonderful. Luke Chamalia and his... Uh, Staff did a did a great job. Uh, congratulations to the grads of uh, Wilmington High School and Shawshank Tech, uh, and also to Mr. Couture and all Mr. Oliveri uh, for uh, taking on their new volunteer positions. Um, and to Mr. Bendel, a happy Father's Day, uh, <laughs> and to all the fathers out there, happy Father's Day coming up. Uh, but I do have a question: uh, Has there been any? Movement on the EPA Olin with Mr. Uh, DiLorenzo in the letter that we received um, 
couple of meetings back, Jeff. Did, did uh, anything? Not to my knowledge, nothing on that. We are scheduled to meet with uh, Mr. DiLorenzo. I believe it's the September meeting at this point, but uh, nothing has come back. Okay. I just want to make sure that we're staying on top of that. Okay, that's it. Thank you. I'll, I'll just go in line here. Uh, really, the only thing I was specifically going to state, but I, I wanted to say I concur with my colleagues that have spoken so far uh, about uh, Memorial Day and uh, um, also wanted to really just focus a little bit of attention on the, the Relay for Life. Jeff's going to go through important dates in a few, moment, uh, in a few moments, uh, but really that Relay for Life, uh, I, th I think they hit the one million mark this year uh, with, uh, with contributions made since, the, since its origin. I'm sorry? We're very close. Oh, I, 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 saw, I saw some social media that I thought he had actually bumped it. But maybe, uh, maybe I'm jumping the gun. But nevertheless. i got to stop monitoring that closer. <laughs> uh, nevertheless, it's a, a, tr a tremendous organization, a tremendous event uh, that touches so many people. And um, I, I, I hope that folks will come out and support uh, and be a part of that. And if you can't be a part of that, please be generous to those that are, um, that are doing fundraising for it. Uh, so thank you. Uh, Mr. McCoy. So I'll just be quick. Everything was pretty much stated. I'll just state uh, on Sunday, went to the farmer's market, had a good time. I saw a selectman Bendel with his baby, and I had my little baby, Chris, 23, there. So he had a great time as well. So it was nice to see Mr. Bendel and his wife was there. And uh, it, was it was really nice. It was a really nice hometown feel. Thank you. Everyone has said um, what I was about to say, but um, <laughs> the Relay for Life is um, something I'm going to try to attend to this weekend. And it's important that we get out to support the community. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. If you could go through important dates, please. Sorry. Uh, so important dates. Uh, speaking of the farmers market, we have uh, the farmers market coming up again. Uh, it will be on the Sundays through October 29th. Uh, Town Common parking lot, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, as was noted, the Relay for Life at the Wilmington High School, Friday afternoon, June 16th to Saturday morning, June 17th. Uh, June 20th is the next Facilities Master Plan Committee, Town Hall, Room 9, 6.30 p.m. A Rotary, Rotary Trivia Night uh, at the Shriners Auditorium is on June 23rd. Uh, June 24th, a Flag Retirement Ceremony, uh, Minuteman Headquarters, 2 p.m. June 26th, the next Board of Selectmen's Meeting, Room 9, 7 p.m. Uh, uh, June 27th is the uh, Reading Municipal Light Department's, quote, sh uh, Shred the Peak, end quote, uh, Bazell Senior Center, 1 p.m. Uh, then the uh, July 4th activities begin on June 29th. Uh, festi uh, the uh, activities run through July uh, 2nd. Uh, you can uh, contact them at 978-657-8081 or funonthefourth.com. Uh, everything will be taking place in the town common. Uh, spectacular fireworks on July 2nd. Family Day is July 1st, town common. Uh, and then the library uh, begins their summer schedule, so they will be closed on uh, Saturdays beginning in July uh, for the summer. Uh, July 1st is also the Wilmington Fire Department versus Wilmington Police Department charity softball game to benefit the 100 Club of Massachusetts, Wilmington High School softball field at 4 p.m. July 5th is a concerts on the common. Uh, the group is Perfect Crime. 6.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. July 5th is also a brush drop-off date, Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. And July 8th, a brush drop-off, Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, with that being said, I would accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion, motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you and good night.